in this uh, we will review derivatives of all major functions using uh, different type of techniques for example we are going to talk about uh, power rule product rule quotient rule chain rule and at the end the implicit differentiation and that's going to cover like all the topics that we learn in uh, calc 1 and also we're going to discuss several different uh, functions like for example we can do polynomials rational functions exponential functions logarithmic functions trigonometric functions and even uh, inverse trigonometric functions so we you can cover you're going to see all of them here so as problems uh, we're going to find derivatives of functions uh, like these uh, for example uh, what is the derivative of a uh, rational functions um, so for example x to the fifth power a uh, cube root so this is a rational function or well, what we normally uh, not the rational function the radical functions so we're going to find um, derivatives of function like that and then uh, we also find um, derivatives of for example let's say um, uh, exponential function of this type so it's like a special exponential function it's a function to function and uh, we need uh, what we call logarithmic uh, differentiation for that and also we're going to do like a product rules like this like for example let's say x cube e to the uh, 2x something like that so that's a that's a product so we have is a product rule for that and then we also gonna um, um, find a derivative like a complicated function like this so let's say for example cosine cube uh, to the um, let's say tan inverse uh, e to the x squared something like that uh, even though it's little uh, looks complicated uh, it's, it's, um, it's easy to uh, find the uh, derivative using what we call the chain rule and we also uh, do um, like uh, for example the quotient rule like for example we're going to find the uh, derivative of a function uh, like this so um, so this is what we call a rational function so we can say um, we, uh, 5x minus 2 something like that that's a rational function when you divide two polynomials you get a rational function you can find derivative of that so that's like the quotient rule uh, and then also uh, some exponential function like this let's say for example 3 to the r4x what is the derivative of this one and also um, um, the exponential function uh, using e so for example what is the derivative of e to the uh, 2x uh, plus 1 um, and also there are results for like a log function like for example what is the natural log derivative of uh, natural log ln uh, x to the fourth uh, let's say minus uh, 3x something like that uh, and also uh, we can find uh, um, derivative of certain uh, trigonometric functions for example how about uh, tan inverse uh, let's say um, uh, x to the uh, fourth power or maybe plus one like that so what's the derivative of this one and also um, like uh, some um, a composite function let's say x to the sixth power uh, plus uh, uh, x to the uh, three plus one a uh, whole thing uh, maybe a fourth power so what is the derivative of this one also at the end uh, we're going to find the derivative of um, implicit uh, function for example let's say you have uh, something like this uh, x cube uh, plus xy equal let's say uh, natural log x squared plus y squared something like that and you can see that this is an implicit function because you can solve for y but we can still find the derivative of this function um, those are special functions are like implicit functions so we can do like all kind of functions like this uh, involving trigonometric functions or exponential uh, products uh, quotients radical functions and everything okay so we can uh, go one by one uh, so we can start with the uh, the most basic rule what we call the constant function so let's talk about that first so uh, so let's start with the constant function constant function so what's a constant function constant function means um, you have a function a y equal a constant so if you look at the graph of this function it looks like that so let's assume the constant is positive so you can see a constant like that so and then we know that so, so that's a value uh, c we know that the constant uh, so that's that's a constant function we know that the derivative is a slope of the 
uh, graph. So what's the slope? So if it's a constant function, slope is simply becomes zero. So the slope is zero. So that means the derivative has to be uh, zero for that function. So that's the first property. So that means uh, uh, we know that. Uh, so I'm write the result here. So if we have a constant function, so let's say c as a constant. So the derivative is zero. So that's the first result. Um, because you can see the slope is zero. Okay, so let's look at uh, some examples. Um, so, for example, what is the derivative of uh, the constant function 3? Uh, so, which is zero according to this result. Okay. So, it can be anything. Uh, so, um, so, we can have a few more. Uh, so, what is the derivative of uh, 100? Still zero. Okay because it's a constant and uh, what's the derivative of uh, this function let's say uh, pi to the e so you know pi is a good number this good irrational number e is a good irrational number and if you raise it's still a constant so it doesn't really matter so it's still zero okay so it's like you know some values it can be positive negative uh, even fractions like for example d over dx uh, negative one half still zero because it's just a constant Good. Uh, how about this one? Uh, d over dx. Let's say um, tan inverse pi over 4. Uh, something like that. Don't get confused. It doesn't matter what you have. It's just a number. So that means it has to be 0. Okay. Good. So that's the first one. Uh, the constant function. So let's go to the next uh, important one. Uh, what we call the uh, power functions. So the next one is the power functions power functions so what's the power functions uh, like when you have y a function like this y equal x to the n that's what we call a power function so what is the um, so n is a constant okay that's the only condition n is a constant n is a constant so the power function have uh, several different type of graphs um, so, uh, so we can have, uh, so I'm going to like, you know, consider several cases. So let's start with the most common ones. Uh, so what's the most common one? Uh, one is the y equal x. So that's the most common one. So that's the y equal x function. It is y equal x. So this is x to the 1. So that's the first one. And what's the next one? Uh, y equal uh, x squared. So let's graph the second one. So let's graph uh, most common ones because these are useful for your uh, calculus classes. So this is y equal x squared. Uh, what we call the parabola. So the graph. So this is y equal x squared. So that's called a parabola. So, so look at the shape of the graph. Okay. Those are not straight lines, uh, and it is symmetric. Symmetric. And what other power functions we know? Um, y equal x cube so let's graph y equal x cube so um so it is like this so it's like that so that's the uh y equal x cube graph y equal x cube so these are all power functions uh, what else we have um so what if uh, n equal negative one so you're gonna get a graph like this so uh, when n equal negative one it is one over x so the graph looks like uh, you can see uh, when the number is getting smaller one over x is getting larger and when the number is getting larger it gets smaller so that's the graph of uh, one over x and when you have negative it's negative so just a reflection or, uh, across the origin so this is uh, y equal one over x and then we have um, one over x squared so uh, what is uh, the graph of 1 over x squared so you can see it is very similar only thing is now uh, both sides are positive because x squared so it's gonna get like that and just like that okay so uh, so this is y equal uh, 1 over x squared so these are all uh, power functions and then uh, we also have um, squared function that's also power function if you say n equal one half you're gonna get this one so um, so this is the uh, square root function 
so it goes like that uh, it's increasing okay so the so this one is y equal uh, square root x and then we have one uh, another power function uh, so this is the uh, y equal x to the cube root so y equal x to the cube root or one third power so you can see uh, uh, square root only defined for um, non-negative values so it can be zero or positive but the cube is defined for negative values as well so that means you're gonna get the other side as well in this case so um so it's gonna go like that and then go like this so that is the um cube root fun okay it's not flat uh, still uh, decreasing so it's gonna go down like that okay and it's symmetric uh, about the origin good so that's the uh, cube root function uh, so those are the uh, several uh, common functions that you need to know and including uh, and then uh, the constant function is you I mean you can write that as a power function because uh, x is when you have x you're gonna see some changes so the constant function is not a power function but so these are the common power functions um, you need to remember for calculus classes okay and then um, i'm going to draw like one uh, last one and you can see if you want to graph like say y equal x to the fourth power um, if you want to graph y equal x to the fourth power so what's going to happen uh, you can see it is very similar to uh, y equal x squared it's only more steeper so uh, so what's going to happen is so it's going to go uh, grow like that and it's very very close to zero and then grow like that so it's like a this looks like y, uh, y equal x, uh, x squared but it's more close to zero um, um, when close to zero the values are smaller okay so that's the only difference uh, and then one of the interesting thing is all these graph pass through the point one one because you can see when you plug in one is all one so all of these graphs uh, pass through the point uh, one one so this is y equal x to the fourth power and then all these graphs pass through at uh, the point uh, one one okay so i mean just only uh, uh, put this in in uh, one of them but you know that this all this passes through the point one one okay the reason is when you plug in one it is one for all of them okay good that's, that's that fact is important sometimes when you try to solve certain problems okay so those are the uh, power functions and let's see how it looks like you know when you try to use the uh, so derivative so we know that the the we, we have the power rule so let's talk about the power rule uh, so what's the power rule what we call power rule so the power rule is uh, if you take the derivative of a uh, power function x to the nth uh, result is n x n minus one okay that's what we call the power rule uh, only condition is n has to be a constant that's it Okay, so all the power functions follow uh, this general rule. Uh, so the only condition is n is a constant. And it's a constant. And also you need to think about the domain. For example, uh, if n is one half, you know that x cannot be negative because otherwise it's going to be complex. So we don't we need to think about that as well. But otherwise, as a general function, this is what we call the power rule. The power rule. Uh, so for any n for any n so let's try to solve uh, some problems from that so let's start with something easy um, so let's solve some problems so let's say uh, what is the derivative of x squared x squared and we don't need a parenthesis around it uh, because there's only one function and it's clear what it is okay so don't use the unnecessary uh, parenthesis around uh, because it can it can complicate okay so if you don't need don't write it okay so no we don't write parentheses here so it's just d or dx squared because you don't need that for the function okay uh, but if you have a product you need so now we can use the uh, power rule according to the power rule in here n equal uh, 2 that's the n so if n equal 2 uh, what do you get is 2 x 2 minus 1 that's what the power rule says so that means if you simplify it is 2 x to the 1 we do not write one because that's obvious one so we just write 2x as the solution because we write the most general most simplified form 
so that's the most simplified form okay so just try to get used to it um, that's how you write good mathematics okay uh, and then let's go to another one and it doesn't really matter what the variable is so you can say dt uh, but then make sure that the function is also in t so t cube again we don't write the parentheses it is obvious what it is okay so get let's get used to um, write things properly okay it's very important uh, to make things simple and uh, to make things good uh, especially when you write something okay or report or something you need those things right okay so again here n equal 3 so uh, that means it is 3 t 3 minus 1 so it is 3 t squared so we leave it like that okay so that's the solution that's the derivative um, next one how about uh, this function d over dx square root x so when you see something like that if you do not see uh, what is the power let's try rewrite it so i'm going to write this one d over dx uh, square root means x to the one half power okay now we know what is n so the n is one half if it's not clear we can do that so now we take the derivative so if you take the derivative it is one half x one half minus one so that means one half x if you subtract uh, one from one half it is negative one so it's clear you want to count two okay now uh, we normally do not leave negative index in final answers so if you get a negative index what are you going to do you need to bring it to the uh, denominator we know that when you switch from either numerator to denominator or denominator to numerator it's going to change the sign of the index okay so it's going to change the sign of the index that's exactly what happens so that means it's going to be one half one over x to the positive one half okay change the sign of the index that's what happened change the sign of the index now we know that uh, x one half means square root so the best way to write this one is one over two square root x by combining so we write the answer like that okay because this is much clear and you can skip many steps if you can do some steps but i'm writing all these steps especially at the beginning okay so let's try to do some uh, special cases um how about our obvious one uh if you have d over dx x um so if you have d over dx x um uh, what is the power here we don't see the power so x means what x means x to the one okay so you can rewrite all this now let's use the power rule so n is one so that means your solution is one x one minus one uh, so what is 1 minus 1? 0. So it is x to the 0. So let's assume that x not equal to 0 because if x equals 0, this not, that's not going to work because you get 0, 0, that's an indeterminate form. So uh, so let's say x not equal to 0. So then we know that x to the 0 is 1. So that means this quantity is simply 1 uh, assuming x not equal to 0. So that means your final answer is simply 1 times 1 is 1. So that if you take the derivative of x, you get 1. This is an interesting result and we can use this a lot. Okay, a lot. So let's talk about a few more cases as well, like some uh, complicated ones. So how about uh, this one? So let's say uh, we have d over dx 1 over x. So if you have 1 over x, uh, what is this? It is simply, again, d over dx. 1 over x means x to the negative 1. It may be easy to do it first before we do that. Okay, And then, now we know what is the n. So n is negative 1. Okay? So if n is negative 1, it is negative 1, x negative 1 minus 1. So that means uh, we have negative we don't need to write negative 1 anymore because negative means negative 1 means negative. So negative x. And you can see negative 1 again, negative 2. Again, the same law. We don't leave the negative index in the denominator anywhere. Okay, we can change it to the other side. So that means you're going to bring it down. So you can write this one as negative 1 over x squared. Good. Um, okay. And then also, like, you know, I'm going to write this small note. We are to write the negative sign. Uh, don't try to write this answer like this. Negative 1 over x squared. I have seen like people writing like that. 
does not really uh, simplify it well because it's still asking you to divide negative 1 by x squared so that is not the most simplified form okay because you still have to do one more step because you have to divide negative 1 by x squared so that means don't try to write your solution like that because that's not more simplified form so more simplified form is you have the negative term in front okay it is negative 1 over x squared okay that's what it means so just try to write the solution in a proper way okay so that's 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 what we call we learn something okay good so the solution so if you have a negative one make sure that you write that in front okay good uh, so not like this okay so this is not the most simplified form good um, so let's do uh, more how about uh, this one uh, let's say uh, d over dt d over dt 1 over t cube okay so the same argument so what we can do first we're going to bring uh, t the power to the top so we can write it like that as a power function now we know uh, what's going to happen so negative 3 t you subtract one negative 4 now you can do it okay uh, you can skip that step so you can just write it like that okay again negative powers that means negative 3 over t to the 4 so that's how you write the final answer okay negative 3 over t to the fourth power okay i hope you learned something now good uh, so let's try to maybe a uh, few more examples you know just little complicated ones so d over dx uh, let's say we have uh, how about uh, you're gonna see something like this let's say uh, t to the fourth power keep root just some numbers you know just put some numbers there okay so uh, this is a radical function so when you have a radical function the first thing that you do is you write this as a power function again oh actually there's a typo here because that's x this will be t so this will be t the way you can take the derivative there because it's a two different variables so we now talk about typical partial derivatives that's like calc 3 topic okay um so let's try this as a power function first as we did what is the cube root means one third power so that means this is uh t to the fourth power one third so that means it is t over dt uh, t to the what when you have power of a power what's going to happen there are two powers you have one power and you have another power what normally happen is you multiply the two okay so you multiply the two that means you can write this one as four third um, so that's the power we need okay you have to simplify up to that okay now we can use the power rule so according to the power rule the power comes out and then t four third minus one so this is very easy to simplify you can see this is four third t to the four third minus one means you subtract one you get one third one third means the cube root so that means the final answer is four third t to the cube root so that is a good way to write the uh, final solution okay i sometimes draw two lines to make sure that that's where you stop okay that's the final answer okay so that's the uh, final answer for uh, that problem so let's do uh, another one so how about this uh, so let's say uh, d over dx uh, one over x uh, let's say three to the square root how about that so again uh, when you have radical functions you need to write this as a um, power function first so let's write that so that means it is 1 over x to the 3 halves we're going to bring it up so that means x to the negative 3 halves now we can use the power rule okay so that's where we can use the power rule so let's do that so that means negative 3 halves uh, x to the uh, you subtract one more so what do you get when you have negative three halves minus one take the common denominator you can see to get the common denominator you need to multiply by two top and bottom so that means this simply becomes negative three halves x to the negative five half okay that's clear now okay now what we're going to do is a negative power bring it down so when you bring it down so it is negative three halves still there we can write this one as 1 over x to the 5 half 5 half means what 
this is a product you can write this one as 5 times 1 half 1 half in the square root so that means you can write the final answer as negative 3 halves you can say 1 over x to the fifth power square root you can already like that okay so that's one way to write the final answer or oh, both are okay uh, and then you can also write 3 a uh, negative 3 divided by 2 and then this uh, one we have so you can write any of them okay both are okay so any version works you can uh, use as a final answer okay so both okay so I'm gonna give you one for you to try uh, so you can try this one so this is an exercise uh, for you so I'm gonna say exercise um, so what is the derivative of uh, 1 over x to the fourth power uh, seventh root okay so what's the answer and you can see this answer in the description okay good so that's about uh, power rules so let's go to uh, so what is the derivative of power power function okay so you can see what the best thing that you can do is just redo it and until uh, you are comfortable with that so let's next go to the constant multiple uh, results so that's there's nothing much here uh, so what it says the constant multiple okay constant constant multiple so what's the constant multiple result it says that if you have a uh, constant times a function I'm going to put a parenthesis around here, a uh, bracket around here because there are two functions, so you need a bracket. Okay, what it says, you can just pull the constant out, okay, and then just take the derivative of the uh, function. And here we don't need a bracket because uh, it's clear now. Okay, that's what it says. If you have a constant, pull it out, okay, that's what you call the constant multiple rule. Simple. Just pull the constant out. Um, good. So let's do. Um, few because we don't need many now so how about this one let's say what is the derivative of d over dx uh, 5 times x to the fourth power uh, here okay now there's a question do we need a bracket or not parenthesis or not you can see there are two functions here one is 5 the other one is x to the fourth power if you do not write a bracket here or parenthesis here it means that take the derivative of 5 and then multiply by x to the fourth so that is completely different from this so that means in this case you need a parenthesis otherwise it means something else okay so be careful with that uh, so you need a like a, if, if you have more than one term you need a, um, a parenthesis around it especially when you have some you need a parenthesis okay? otherwise you only take the derivative of the first term okay so that's different when you write mathematics you need to write mathematics correctly because otherwise it's, it has a complete different meaning Okay, we don't need to we need to avoid them okay so now uh, so we use the uh, constant multiple rule that's a constant so take it out and just take the derivative of the second term so what do you do take the derivative of x to the fourth that's what this says okay so that means it's five we don't take the derivative it is four x to the this is subtract one three now what we can do uh, we're going to combine these two so when you combine these two 5 times 4 means 20 x to the third power okay that's the final answer okay i also need one more word here uh, you can see uh, in the previous step i write 5.4 so there are this is like actually also important uh, what i'm writing here so there are two things you can write 5.4 versus you can write 5.4 see where i put the dot in the second one i put the dot in the middle in the first one i put dot in the lower level those two are two different things in the first one it means 5.4 okay 5.4 in the second one it means 5 times 4 okay they are not equal so be careful when you write the dot sign so that means it's not equal to 5.4 because we here we put the dot in the middle that means the multiplication okay that means the multiplication so be careful with those okay because sometimes we even ignore that and get a completely different answer okay 
Uh, yeah, so with the dot in the in the bottom level or in the middle, okay? Two different things. Okay, good. So, uh, how about a uh, few more? Uh, let's do like three more. So, d over dx. Uh, let's say 2 square root x. Do you need a parenthesis here? Yes, okay. Uh, now, we're going to use the uh, power rule. So, that means uh, first we take the 2 out and then take use the power rule. So, we can write this one as x to the 1 half. With a square root now we use the power root so two times if you take the derivative of this so we can see it is one half x to the negative one half and then you can see this and that get cancelled so you get x to the negative one half we do not write negative sign we don't leave negative sign negative powers in the final answer so we can write this one like that but this simply means one over square root x okay so that's the final answer and you can skip certain steps okay that's okay if you understand what you're doing um how about this one d over dx uh, let's say 7 over x to the fifth power so and then this is okay now the question do you need a parenthesis now and you can see that you do not need a parenthesis now okay so i'm not writing it because it's not necessary here. You can, but it's not necessary. Because it's clear what you're doing right now. Um, so, again, what we're going to do is we're going to pull the 7 out. Take the derivative of the other function. But the other function you can write as x to the negative 5. Now we use the power rule. So, 7. Okay. I'm not going to write 7 negative 5. Because this looks like you're subtracting. So that means when you write a negative number, make sure that you use a parenthesis to avoid the confusion. Okay, so when I writing, when I especially uh, multiplying with a negative number, I always put a parenthesis around to avoid the confusion. And when you write the parenthesis, you don't want to say, you want to use the dot because the parenthesis means multiplication around. Okay, so it's automatic multiplication. So we don't write the dot, it means multiplication. Okay, so let's write, let's do something right. Okay, x and you subtract 1, so that means give me negative 6. Now, negative 5 times 7 is negative 35. So, we can write this one as negative um, uh, 35. And then you know how to write the answer now. So, it's negative 35 over x to the 6. Okay, so we can skip some steps. So, that's the final answer. We write the negative sign in front. Okay, so I don't like if you write negative 35 over x to the 6. Okay, it's okay, but it's not more, uh, simplified enough. Good. Um, so let's do the final problem. So how about this one? D over dt. Uh, so let's say uh, 3t. 3t. Do you need the parentheses? Yes. Uh, t is a constant. Uh, 3 is a constant, and we have dt over dt. D dt over dt is 1. So that means 3 times 1. It's not 3.1, it's 3 times 1. So this is 3. Okay. Also, you can use a parenthesis around if you want to exaggerate some multiplication. Okay. So that's that's one way. If you forget that this is a multiplication. So you can use that. Okay. You can say okay, times one. So it's three. Good. So those are this is how you do the uh take the derivative of constant functions. Okay. Uh, constant multiple, constant multiple. Okay, now let's go to the next uh, most important one. Okay, actually, what does that mean? This means that um if you take the derivative if you find the slope of this curve what curve so you have uh, y equal 3t curve so if you have y equal 3t curve the y equal 3t it says that the slope of this curve is 3 the slope we normally use m is 3 that's exactly the case okay you know that's the slope okay that's what it says so there it is the slope and this is the justification for that okay so <clears throat> let's do the uh, sum rule so what's a sum rule sum rule so what's the sum rule says uh, sum rule says if you have d over dx a sum fx plus gx sum like that so what it says that you can take the derivative of the function separately okay 
so that means this simply equals to the derivative of the first function plus the derivative of the second function okay the sum rule and also the same rule even works for negative signs as well so that means even if you have a negative sign it still works okay so if you have plus sign go with the plus if you have minus sign go with the minus sign okay so this is the uh, sum rule it's a sum rule um, that's also like an obvious result is coming from the limit definition why this is true okay we normally prove this one in a calc one uh, using the limit definition okay so let's do some examples so this is like one of the very important result very very important result so that means for example if we have the de if you need the derivative of uh, 5x to the fourth minus 3x squared plus 7x uh, let's say plus pi pi is a constant okay do we need a parenthesis around yes because otherwise you are only taking the derivative of the first term okay so we need that that means take the derivative of the everything okay now what we do we take the derivative uh, term by term so let's take the derivative of the first term it is five times and then constant is four so what's going to happen uh, is this. Uh, what's going to happen is four times x to the three minus three um, the next power is two so it is two x to the one and then plus seven and we know that the derivative of x is one and then uh, pi is a constant so it is zero okay so that's what happened now if you can simplify so in this case we can simplify five times so it's a multiplication so it is 20 x to the third power 3 times 2 is 6 x we don't write x to the 1 plus 7 so that is the final answer most simplified answer okay very simple um uh, so uh so let's do more uh, how about this problem so let's say we have uh, d over dx let's say 9 x to the fifth power minus 4 uh, it just put some numbers 3 and then let's say uh, x to the fourth power fifth root okay something like that again there are more terms so we need a parenthesis okay good so the if we is terms like that the first thing is you try to write using uh, uh, powers so let's do that uh, so this is already there so we can repeat it and this one we can bring the power to the top so it's going to be negative 3 and then plus here uh, you can see uh, fifth root means one fifth power that means it's going to be x to the four fifth okay that's the first step you don't take any derivatives just rewrite using the powers now we can use the power rule okay so let's use the power rule now second so power rule it is nine times five x to the fourth minus 4 times power is negative 3 so negative number so i'm going to use a parenthesis to avoid the confusion and x subtract 1 this means negative 4 plus the power is 4 fifth it's clear and x you subtract 1 so what's going to happen when you subtract uh, 1 from 4 fifth so it is negative 1 fifth is that clear so uh, now what we can do is uh, we can simplify this further so when you simplify uh, you're gonna get and if it is not clear like you know how to get uh, this one uh, I'm gonna show you that work here so uh, so what we can do is so so what we are doing here actually so I'm just a knot okay, simple knot of uh, what's going on here so we have 4 5 minus 1 so what we normally do is you take the common denominator the common denominator in this case is 5 so we can multiply the top and bottom by 5 so we can write this as 4 fifth minus 5 over 5 and then after that you just need to subtract the numerators so that means 4 minus 5 is negative 1 over 5 but we don't write the negative sign there so we write the negative sign in front so that's why you get negative 1 fifth okay good 
um yeah i think i take too much space so now i'm gonna write the final answer here uh let me skip it as part so you're gonna get nine times four is 45 uh x to the fourth power minus uh actually it's a negative four times negative three that means positive 12 so it's 12 and then you can see this is a negative power it's going to go down so that means it's going to be x to the fourth power and again uh we have negative one fifth that means it's going to go down positive one fifth that means fifth root so you can write the final answer as four over five times the fifth root of x make sure that you put the five in the basket okay good um so that's the final answer for that good uh so this is like extra i'm gonna take this part out okay that's, that's just a simplification okay good uh so that's how you use the sum rule okay uh so let's do one more problem that seems like it's not the uh, simple rule but it is okay so for example this problem so this is especially useful in uh, calc 2 okay we can discuss that later uh, so this problem d over dt uh, d over dt uh, let's say we have t squared minus 2t uh, plus 3 over uh, t square t uh, square root uh, in this case you don't need the parentheses uh, because it's, it's a quotient so we just leave it like that okay writing a uh, parenthesis around this is really unnecessary okay i should say it's a, like bad practice okay so let's not do that okay uh <coughs> only write when it is necessary okay so or it is not clear good so you can see that we tried to the derivative uh maybe if you know the quotient rule you feel like uh, you're going to use the quotient rule but you don't need the quotient rule for this problem uh, especially this is very important when you try to take the integrals okay we can problem do problems like that because when you take the integrals there are no quotient rules for integrals okay you definitely have to use the method that i'm discussing here okay so this this is very important in in that sense so let's put an arrow here okay special problem <clears throat> i'm gonna kind of point out this problem in the description okay with the timestamp okay so what do you do first is you divide each term that's the first thing we do okay so we're going to divide first so we don't do anything with this we're going to divide so it is t squared over square root t minus uh, we have uh, 2t divided by square root t and then plus 3 over square root t now we have more terms so we need the parentheses now good so let's uh, simplify this first so we can divide that's mean you're going to subtract one half from the uh, numerator uh the power of numerators so that means this can be uh, t you subtract one half so it's going to be three halves and then minus two times if you subtract one half it is t to the one half and then this is three the t to the one half to the, to the uh, it comes to the top so it's going to be a negative one half so that's what happened more terms so we put the parentheses around okay now we can see <coughs> each term has a power so we can use the power rule so if you use the power rule as a d over dt so this is uh no we don't need that because we're gonna use the power rule now so let's see the power rule so it's gonna be three halves t subtract one half that means one half minus two times power rule one half that's a power t subtract one so negative one half plus 3 the power is this so subtract that so it is negative one half it's a negative number i put a parenthesis just to make sure it's a multiplication and t now you have negative one half when you subtract one from negative one half it's going to be negative three halves so right <coughs> again if you forget how that's going to happen so you can see it is one half minus one take the common denominator so it is one half minus two over two that means negative in the top is going to be negative three over two we can write this like that okay so we can write this one as negative three halves okay these two numbers are different the first one is says negative three divided by two the bottom one says is negative three halves so those are two different numbers okay good <clears throat> now uh, we're gonna uh, 
write them use proper notations so let's do that so if you use proper notations you're gonna get three half square root t and then uh, this get cancelled so you get negative it's a uh, negative power go down square uh, one half means square root so it's gonna go like that and then this also there are some simplifications so it's negative three halves i'm gonna write this in different way now <clears throat> again go down half means square root so that means you can write this one as one over t cube square root okay so that is the uh, number using the radical notation uh, good so that's the final answer for that problem okay it's not difficult but there are certain things that you need to remember good now uh, we're gonna talk about uh, one of the most important results what we call the product rule so let's do the product rule uh, uh, so let's do the product rule so uh, product rule so what's the product rule says it says that d over dx you have u and v2 functions uh, when you have product you need to put the parenthesis okay and then what the uh, result says it is u v prime plus v u prime so it doesn't matter which one you write first just remember whatever form you like but you can only thing that you remember is you only take the derivative of one of them and multiply by the other one itself and have a plus sign okay plus sign uh, good so so you're gonna get uh, this one this is what we call the uh, product rule u v prime v u prime okay so let's have remember u v prime v u prime uh, okay u v prime v u prime so good uh, so let's do uh, some problems okay so let's start with uh, one of the uh, products let's say d over dx uh, so we have product so that means you need a uh, bracket so, okay. and also try to use the proper brackets uh, so don't try to use uh, brackets when you want to use parentheses. For example, in the first one, I don't write d over dx bracket uv. Okay, it's not really proper because there are there are levels of those brackets. For example, we use the parentheses as the smallest case, and then we write this as the next one, and then this is the largest one. So those are the kind of levels that we go from. So we don't use. Uh, square bracket when you want to use a parenthesis so we don't do that okay so that's the kind of priority order for those uh, yeah that's the what we call the proper writing okay yep good uh, so that's why we use the bracket here now because that's in the next level good uh, now we can see uh, so that is the u function this is the uh, v function it doesn't really matter just pick one as u function one as the v function okay <clears throat> good so I'm going to use the uh, product rule now. So what the product rule says, write the first one as, as it is. Take the derivative of the second one. So I'm going to use the prime notation now. So prime, when you see the prime, that means take the derivative of whatever inside. Plus, see so the order. What do you, you write the uh, v now? So v and u prime. What do u x3? plus one prime when you see prime that means the derivative this is uv prime v u prime so let's write so is u v prime and then v u prime okay so that's what happened now what we can do we can take the derivatives okay so we do and then remember the plus sign so it's very important as a plus sign here okay plus because when it comes to <coughs> the quotient rule is a minus sign okay good and i will tell you how to remember that as well there's a easy way to remember this that okay okay now let's uh, find them one by one so i'm going to leave this and take the derivative so what's the derivative of this one for x okay because it's a uh, 
2x squared, so it is 4x, and plus 1. Here, you repeat, and then take the derivative, so it is 3x squared plus 0, we don't want to write that, okay, 3x squared. Okay, now what do you do? Don't leave it like that, okay, just try to expand and simplify. So when you expand, what do you get? Um, so we're going to first multiply the first term by everything. We explained this in the algebra video, how to expand like that. Pick one term, multiply with everything. Pick the next term, multiply with everything, like that. Okay, that's how we do. So pick the first term, multiply with everything. So what are you going to get is 4x to the fourth power and then x to the cube. Now we pick the next term, multiply, so you're going to get 4x and then plus 1. So that's what you get uh, from the first one. If you go to the second one, <coughs> do the same thing. Uh, pick 1, multiply with everything. In this case, only 1, so it's easy. So you have uh, 3 times 2, 6x to the 4th power plus 3x to the cube. Now, Collect terms, you can see, you can combine. Uh, so you can see, you can combine these two uh, and uh, those two. Okay, so let's combine them and write the final solution. So we have 10 uh, x to the fourth power plus four x to the cube plus four x plus one. So that's what you get as the final answer. Uh, so let's do uh, one more. The next one. So let's do a little complicated one. Okay, so d over dt, uh, t square root, 3t to the fourth power minus 1. Again, more terms, we need the uh, bracket. More than one term. Again, uh, the u function, it doesn't matter which one, okay, just pick one, uh, because you just take the derivative of one, multiply with the other one, and take the derivative of the other one and multiply, so, so it's, it's, it doesn't matter, that's why it doesn't matter, okay, because it's a plus sign. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite the first one as it is, take the derivative of the second one, so if you take the derivative, so let's write, and uh, it's okay to write this step, uh, because sometimes, it's going to save a lot of points because sometimes we forget what we are doing. And so, it's okay to write this, okay? <clears throat> Even if you don't write, that's, that's okay, but that can save sometimes. Okay, now, let's do what we are saying. So, take the derivative. So, if you take the derivative, uh, you're going to get uh, 12t3 minus 1 means 0, so we don't write it, plus uh, 3t to the 4th minus 1. Take the derivative. So this is a half power, so that means one half t to the negative one. <clears throat> now uh, multiply through. So what's going to happen here? So you can see t to the one half t to the cube. So you're going to add one half to the cube. So if you add one half to the uh, one half to the third power, <coughs> how much you get? If you add one half to the third power. So I'm going to do the work here. So we have um, one half and a three. So take the common denominator. Common denominator is two. Uh, so you can multiply the top and bottom by two. It's going to be six over two. So that means six plus one. So that means seven, two. Okay. There's another way to do this problem. Uh, what normally happens is this. Uh, you multiply these two and add that. Okay, that's what happens. So multiplication and addition, always. Okay, when you when you have a fraction and a number, you multiply with the denominator and add to the top. So you get the number. Okay, it works for it works any time. <coughs> <coughs> and if it is a, a subtraction, like um, like for example, in the next one you have uh, four negative one half. In that case, you subtract, you multiply and subtract. Okay, that's what can happen. Okay, so let's we can we do more. Okay, so when you do that, that means you're gonna get here uh, 12 uh, t to the seven half. That's what you get, 
and then uh, the same argument uh, in the next one you have to multiply by one half t to the negative one half so that means the number is going to be three halves so it is uh, t to the fourth that means four minus one half how much four minus one half if you do four minus one half you can see that's again seven half okay uh, again seven half and then you have the next one is you multiply by negative one so that means you can write this one as one over uh, one half means you can write two like that and then uh, negative one half plus three one half so it's square root t so you get okay now you can combine these two you can see uh, you have 2l and 3 halves so we can do the same argument so you uh, add a uh, term to a you add an integer okay let's do the work here you have an integer and a fraction it is an addition very simple you multiply these two and then add to that so multiplication and addition so that means you're going to get 12 times 2 uh, 24 plus 3 means 27 so that means it is simply 27 over 2 okay so that means when you add these two numbers you're going to get 27 halves t to the uh, uh, t to the 7 half okay t to the 7 half that you can uh, write as how you can write that uh, so you can say uh, you get uh, seven halves that means you're gonna get the 27 power uh, seven half seven half means uh, uh, you're gonna get uh, square root of uh, t to the seven so it is t to the seven and the square root okay so to get a negative one over two square root t. so that's the final answer for that problem okay it's not that difficult but there are some uh, algebra that you need to uh, remember good so let's do uh, maybe one last problem uh, which has a little bit more terms so how about this one as the last problem of this type so it's a d over dx uh, the product 2x plus 3 and then we have x squared minus x plus 1 okay good so this is easy um, again uh, we have a u and a v so what do you get you write the first one as it is take the derivative of the second one so it is 2x minus 1 and then write the second one as it is take the derivative of the first one so it is 2 okay now we are done with the uh, derivative part it's just algebra so multiply through we multiply the first term with first term so you're gonna get 4x squared and multiply with the second one so you get negative 2x now we multiply and the second time with the first one so you get 6x and then minus 3 here you're gonna get 2x squared minus 2x plus 2 now combine like terms <coughs> so if you combine like terms you get 6x squared and then um, you get negative 4 negative 4 positive 6 so you get 2x and then minus 1 so that is the uh, final answer okay so next uh, what we gonna do are we gonna do more complicated problems later uh, after we know the chain rule and other results um, so let's move on to the uh, the next result the quotient rule before we discuss the next topic uh, let's try to look at uh, one of the problems that we did before again uh, yeah, using a different technique so for example we look at uh, this problem before using the product rule uh, so we had d over dt uh, square root t uh, 3 to the t 4 minus 1 so this problem so you know that we we normally do because you see a product we normally do a problem like that using the product rule but there is a way to avoid the product rule for these kind of problems and you can get the answer much quicker so what we're going to do we're going to distribute this first because you can multiply by uh, square root t uh, the two terms and we're going to distribute that first so if you do that um, so what are you going to get d over dt so we're going to multiply through so we're going to multiply by um, t to the one half uh, so that means you're going to get three uh, t to the four 
and plus one half um, minus t to the one half. So if you simplify, so we are not taking derivative yet. So if you simplify this further, you're gonna get three. Um, if you add one half, this becomes nine half minus t to the one half. And you can see that this is very simple. Uh, so you don't need the product rule for this one. So just take the uh, use the power rule and get the answer. So you can see this is much quicker. So it is three. If you use the power rule, it is uh, nine half uh, t to the seven half minus uh, what happened here? It is one half t to the negative one half. Um, so we can uh, write this uh, using the radical notation. So that means uh, your final answer is going to be uh, 27 over 2 uh, t uh, 7 square root minus 1 over 2 square root t. So you can see uh, you can get the answer much quicker and you do not need the product rule for this problem. So there are certain things that you can do to make the um, algebra uh, simple. Okay, so you can do similar things again when it comes to a uh, quotient rule. So let's discuss the quotient rule now. Uh, so the quotient rule. Quotient rule. So what's the quotient rule? Uh, so we have the derivative of um, a quotient. We normally write uv. That's the standard format we write, uh, u over v. Uh, again, uh, when you have a quotient, you don't need the parentheses, but I just write it just to make it clear. Okay, and then uh, what's the formula? Uh, how you remember the v comes first, so remember that v comes before u. Okay, v comes before u, so it is v u prime minus there's a minus sign u v prime over v square. So it's a prime notation for derivatives. And this is how you write. That's why um, the order matters because there's a minus sign for the quotient rule. There's a plus sign for the product rule. So if you change this to the plus sign and if you remove the uh, denominator part, that's just the product rule. But for the quotient rule, there's a minus sign and V comes first. Okay, so V comes first. So that's the uh, product rule. Um, so again, uh, how you remember this? Uh, remember V uh, comes. Uh, before you okay so remember that uh, okay so in other words uh, so this v means v and this u means u okay so uh, so v comes before you okay so remember that that way you can remember uh, the formula is never gonna you never forget that okay so let's do um, a uh, the first problem so the first problem is uh, d over dx so let's say we have x plus 2 over x minus 1 and in this case you don't need a parenthesis because it's a quotient so we are going to write the parenthesis for this one and it's clear so uh, so according to the uh, product rule and then you can uh, according to the quotient rule so we're going to consider the top as the u term that's the v term uh, so let's write it. So v u prime v means x minus one, and then u prime. Since this is the first example, I'm gonna write it like that. So the prime notation minus um, u that means x plus two uh, v prime x minus one prime over v squared. So x minus one whole thing squared. So now let's try to the derivatives. If you take the derivatives, uh, it is x minus one. A derivative of the first term is x plus 2, so derivative is 1 minus x plus 2. Derivative of x minus 1 is 1 over uh, x minus 1 squared. Um, and then let's simplify. So now you can see it's a 1, so that means what you have is x minus 1. And then when you multiply by the minus sign, you get minus x minus 2 over x minus 1 squared now you can see you can simplify the top so these two get cancelled so you get negative 3 uh, so you get negative 3 so we put the negative sign in front so negative 3 over x minus 1 squared so that is the final answer for uh, this problem and you can see it's not difficult but there are certain uh, steps that you follow 
and you remember the formula a uh, very important thing is the uh, negative sign that's a negative sign so let's do more problems uh, one other one so how about this one d over dx 3x squared plus 1 divided by x cube plus x okay again we don't need the parentheses for this one because the quotient uh, it's obvious uh, what we have to do okay again the formula v u prime v means x3 plus x uh, v uh, u prime so it is uh, what's the u prime what's the uh, derivative of the first term 6x so it is 6x minus uh, u that means 3x squared plus 1 u v prime what is v prime uh, derivative of the bottom term it is 3x squared plus 1 divided by the denominator is squared so x cubed plus x whole thing squared okay now what you need to do is over the uh, the derivative part is over uh, now what we need to do with this the algebra part just a simple uh, simplification so let's uh, multiply through so you're going to get 6x to the fourth power plus 6x squared and then when you multiply through the next one, I'm gonna because there are a lot of terms, I'm gonna write uh, using a parenthesis for that. So you're gonna get if you multiply the first terms, if you multiply the first terms, so you can use a foil here. Uh, you can you see that you get nine x to the fourth power, and then you multiply the last term with the first terms, you're gonna get three x squared. Now you multiply the um, second term with the first term of the other one, so you're gonna get another three x squared. Plus you multiply the last terms, you're gonna get that divided by uh, x3 plus x squared uh, so now you can uh, simplify this further um, so you can see um, so you can simplify the uh, x to the fourth power so you're going to get uh, negative 3x to the fourth power and then x squared so you can see 6x squared and then uh, uh, you have uh, negative 3 squared, negative 3 squared because of negative sign, so they get cancelled. Uh, so, and then you um, only get uh, minus 1 over x3 plus x squared. Uh, what we can normally do is we can pull the negative sign out and we can write this as a positive term because it's much better to write it that way. Okay. So, x3 plus x um, we try to write the final answer using least number of negative signs so that's the kind of if you look at the uh, solution in the back of the book you can see this pattern so you always try to do that you try to write your solutions using least number of negative signs because in, in this way you answer only have one negative sign so that's why we do it like that okay we prefer that okay let's do uh, another one um, so uh, like this so let's say d over dt uh, t squared minus 1 over square root t okay again no parenthesis needed um, so we just use a result uh, so the vu prime minus uv vu prime minus uv prime okay so u that means uh, square root t uh, vu prime so this 2t minus u that means t square minus 1 v prime v prime means 1 half t to the negative 1 half divided by t square root squared you can just write t that's okay but i'm just writing uh, showing all the steps now uh, let's simplify let's multiply through uh, so when you multiply through you're going to get from the first term t you have a half power, one power, that means t, three halves, and you add them. And then uh, again, when you multiply, now uh, we're going to multiply uh, through the other two. So you're going to get uh, from the first term, you get one half, uh, t squared, negative one half, that means you subtract one. So you're going to get t, three halves for that. Uh, and then negative, negative, positive. So you have one half, t, negative one half. And in the bottom, you're going to see t. Now what we can do is uh, we can uh, simplify a little bit further. So what we can do is uh, this is you see a one half. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to multiply t uh, two. 
also uh, you can see t to the negative one half so we can multiply by the opposite sign that means uh, so we find the smallest term and multiply by the opposite sign so we're going to multiply the top and bottom by 2t one half okay. uh, because the reason is you try to uh, uh, cancel that term so we can multiply by the opposite sign. so once you do that uh, as you can see um, so one half so three halves that means you're going to get added up that means t squared becomes t squared and then two minus one half means uh, three halves uh, and also uh, actually you multiply by two so when you multiply by two uh, the four, uh, two become four one half become just one so that means four minus one become three so that means your final answer is three t squared minus one over two uh, t to the uh, cube square root um, so that's the final answer for this problem okay so if you find any difficulty at any, any place uh, what you can do you can put that in the comment section either me or someone else uh, will answer that because um, there are a lot of very generous students and they can help you as well okay so let's do uh, the last problem of uh, this type uh, before we move on to chain rule uh, so how about uh, so let's do one last problem uh, before we move on to the chain rule uh, so how about the function s which is square root uh, t over uh, 1 plus square root t okay that's a function so the derivative ds over dt again the we use the quotient rule for that so if you use the quotient rule uh, v that is 1 plus square root t uh, and then uh, v u prime so we can take the derivative of the uh, top term so that means one half t to the negative one half minus u v prime and when you do v prime and you can see one is a constant so that means you again get the uh, same term t negative one half divided by one plus square root t squared uh, so let's see how the simplification uh, works uh, so what's going to happen when you multiply it through uh, so you get the first term uh, so the first term is simply one half t negative one half and then what's going to happen when you multiply it through this is negative one half this is uh, here we have positive one half so when you multiply it through they get cancelled so you simply get one half from the second term and the same argument works for the last term as well square root two cancel with uh, um, square root t cancel with negative one half so you're gonna get negative uh, no one half t negative one half uh, same argument because this is a positive one half this is negative one half they cancel so that means you're gonna get a negative one half divided by one plus square root two t squared now you can see these two terms get cancelled so you're gonna get a one half t square root uh, so what we can do you can multiply the top and bottom by uh, two um, so you can you can multiply the top and bottom by two times by two to cancel one half two times uh, square root t, okay top and bottom so once you do that uh, you're gonna get this answer as the final answer so that means top is simply gonna be one the bottom is uh, two square root t uh, 1 plus square root 2 squared so that's the uh, final answer for this problem so it's very clear okay good so uh, so we're gonna move on to the next topic uh, what we can do uh, we're gonna do the uh, uh, the chain rule okay we'll do the chain rule uh, that's again uh, one of the very important topic in calculus because that's everywhere uh, especially for calc 2 uh, we need uh, chain rule a lot okay so chain rule uh, so chain rule uh, so what we're gonna do uh, in the chain rule is uh, we can assume that there's a function uh, u uh, so which is a function of x so that means u is a function of x okay so that means uh, it's a function of x that's how we write it u is a function of x 
So if that is the case, what's going to happen if u is a function of x? Let's say you need to take the derivative of a function where uh, you have you have a another function which is a function of u. Okay, so let's say you have a function which is a function of another function, function of a function, okay, uh, the composite function. Now the goal is what is the derivative? So you have a comp composite function, you try to find the derivative of a composite function. So what the theorem says that in this case, what you normally do is you just take the derivative of the function f with respect to u first and then take the u with respect to x. Okay, so that's what what we call chain rule. Um, this also equals to uh, what we do is you take the derivative of f with respect to u times the derivative of u with respect to x. So that is a, another version of the chain rule. Okay, so so let's see how we can use this. This is a very simple um, idea. So this is what we call the chain rule. Only condition is u has to be a function of x. Okay, um, so what we normally call this u is what we call the inside function. Okay, so we co we call uh, so um, so u is what we normally call the inside function. Inside function. Okay, inside function. So the goal is to find the inside function. Okay, so this is so it works for composite functions because a function of a function. Okay, so works for composite functions. Works for composite functions. Okay, so when you have composite function, we can use the chain rule. It's a function of a function. Okay, so let's start with. Uh, and then also uh, we have uh, what we call the general power rule so we can use the uh, so let's write that also so the uh, other version is the what we call general power rule general power rule so what's the general power rule uh, it's the derivative of a let's say you have function the nth power nth power so what general power rule says that simply treat fx as x so that means this simply become n fx to the n minus one times you have extra term f prime x so if you remember this one this this is really helpful this is what we call the general power rule so if you see any function to a power n n can be any number any constant then your answer is simply going to be n fx n minus 1 and then you multiply by the derivative of the uh, function so this is what we call the general power rule you can see it's very similar to the power rule except that extra term uh, f prime x in here so we call this is a general power rule okay that's that extra term so this is important okay so uh, so let's try to uh, do um, this problem. So let's try to do some problems until you like you get comfortable. So we can do like, a little bit more problems from this one because this is like one of the very important topic. So let's start with this problem. Uh, so let's say d over dx, x cube plus one to uh, let's say uh, fourth power. Um, yeah, some numbers. So and then you can see that you can directly use the general power rule for this problem. So if you use the general power rule, uh, what's going to happen? Uh, so in this function, fx is simply the inside function, x, uh, x cubed plus 1. According to the general power rule, this is simply going to be n equal 4. So that's the n value. That's 4. And that's the fx function. So you can see this is simply uh, 4. Write the function uh, as it is. Subtract 1 from the uh, power. So it's going to be 3 because n minus 1 times multiply by the derivative of the function so d over dx derivative of the inside function x3 plus that's it that's the general power rule so that means for uh, x3 plus 1 you can see there's nothing happen inside and if you take the derivative this is simply going to be 3x square now what we're going to do we're going to multiply through 
So when you multiply numbers, you multiply the numbers first. So 4 times is 12 and x squared. And then we have x3 plus 1 to the third power. And you can see you can do thousand problems like that. It's very simple. Very, very simple. Um, now, so if you use the... Um, if you use the chain rule the other way, so let's do this problem using the other technique also. So what's going to happen? So we have uh, x3 plus 1 to the cube. And what you can do, uh, we're going to take a u. So what is u? u is the inside function. In this case, x3 plus 1. So uh, now let's try the formula. According to the formula, what we're going to do is, so this simply becomes uh, d over dx u to the cube so that's what happened because u is the inside function now according to the chain rules that's where we ignore the chain rule okay according to the chain rule this is going to be um, d over d u u cube with well, as a function okay um, times times d u over dx okay so this is coming from the chain rule now that's the chain rule. On the power rule, the chain rule. So now, uh, according to the formula, so what's going to happen is you get the derivative of this function with respect to u, this has been 3u squared, and take the derivative d u, uh, of u with respect to x, so that means 3x squared. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to replace a u back. So, uh, not sure, I, I'm sorry, I changed the problem. So this should be 3. So. Okay, so this is actually for the same problem. So 4, uh, 4, and 4. So what happens? 4. Uh, so we have 4 uh, u cube. Okay, good. Now what we're going to do, we're going to substitute for u. So if you substitute for u, uh, what's going to happen? It is 4 u simply x3 plus 1 cube. Uh, times 3x squared. If you multiply through, you're going to get 4x squared x3 plus 1 cube. And you can see that um, uh, these two are the same. Okay, so These two are the same. But if you get a problem like that, uh, the general power will be much e uh, faster. So, uh, especially you have, a, you have some function to a power. So, just try to use the uh, general power rule so what's the general power rule n fx to the n minus 1 times the derivative of the inside function that's the general power rule it's much faster okay so uh, so let's use general power rule for this problem okay so you can see it's much faster and quicker so this problem so let's say we want to find the derivative of uh, 3x squared minus uh, 4x plus 5 square root okay so that's the problem so what you're going to do you're going to figure out what is n in this case so you can see this is simply if you can rewrite this 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 step is not really necessary but if you want to make it clear you can write that so it's 3x squared minus 4x plus 5 1 half power okay now we use the general power rule because you see the function right there so according to general power rule it is 1 half that's n and then 3x squared minus 4x plus 5 negative 1 half so that is n fx n minus 1 times the derivative of the inside function so what's the derivative of the inside function 6x minus 4 okay very simple just one, one line now what we're going to do is you can see 1 half i uh, so you can cancel 2 and this is going to be 3 this is going to be 2 so that means you can write your final answer and also you can bring the negative one half term down. So that means your final answer is going to be 3x minus 2 over 3x squared minus 4x plus 5. So you can see that this is much quicker. Okay, it's much quicker. And that is the final answer for that. So if you want to find the tangent line uh, for a curve, for that curve, this is exactly what you do. We simplify like that, and then we're going to plug in the values and find tangent line. Okay, good. Um, so, uh, so let's do. Uh, so let's do a problem like a product problem now. 
so how about this problem so let's say we have d over dx um, x plus 1 squared and then we have x squared plus 2x something you know so this is a product so we need another uh, so we put the bracket there okay now what we can do we have is a product rule and you can see uh, so that's the u term that's the v term uh, so u term is everything yeah i'm gonna write it like that so it will be we're going to make sure what is the u term so u term is everything including the power uh, v term is this one so v that one is not power so okay so let's use the uh, product rule uh, uv prime v u prime so this is the product rule i'm going to write the first term u no change v prime so we write x squared plus 2x plus v that is 2x plus 2x um, u prime that is x plus 1 square the prime of that okay um, so for this one for this uh, we're going to use the chain rule okay so use chain rule So in the inside the product rule you have to use the chain rule okay only for that you have to use the chain rule so let's use that so if you use it, uh, now we're gonna uh, sub, uh, sub, uh, find the derivative so it is x plus 1 square the de de derivative is 2x plus 2 here plus x squared plus 2x uh, okay now let's use the chain rule so we use the general power rule again it is 2 x plus 1 you subtract 1 from the power and then multiply by the derivative of the function inside which is 1 okay so that's what you get uh, from the general power rule okay so this is a general uh, power rule yeah so this part is coming from the general power rule okay so uh, now it would be best to simplify these kind of one using uh, factoring methods just just try to take the common factors out so if you do the common factors what are the common factors 2 is a common factor x plus 1 is a common factor so if you take the common factors out uh, from the first term you're going to get x plus 1 squared so you took this term out uh, in the other one we take 2x plus 1 out so you end up getting uh, x squared plus 2x so to get now we can simplify again that part so we have 2x plus 1 um, okay so we first use the foiling for that one and if you look at the uh, factoring uh, polynomials video and you can see that uh, you're going to see a lot of formulas there so this is like one of the um, uh, squaring formula so this is square of a um, uh, binomial term okay we know that we know the formula for binomial uh, squaring for binomial so if you use that or you can have the foiling for this one uh, so if you use the formula uh, what do you get x plus one you can write this one x plus one x plus one expand so you simply get you square the first term twice the product so you're going to multiply the two and multiply by two so you get two x and square of the last term that means one that's what you get uh, when you expand that okay that's what we call the um, complete square of a binomial term so you can use the Pascal triangle for that one two one so those are the coefficients one two one see numbers one two one the coefficients okay now we write the rest so x squared plus two x uh, so that's what you get uh, now we're gonna collect, collect the terms so you get two we have x plus one and then we have two x squared and two x two x means four uh, x plus one uh, so you can factor this further so we can leave this as the final answer you know this algebra takes some time but the de derivative uh, doesn't take much but the algebra takes some time but what i'm going to show you inside the problem you use the product rule and the quotient rule okay both of them okay so let's try to do one another problem using the um, chain rule and the quotient rule okay so how about that so the next problem uh, so we have d over dx uh, let's say x plus 1 over x minus 1 square root okay? 
something like that uh, again so for this problem you can use a general power rule because you can see this is a function to a power so you can see this problem looks like this you have a, some kind of function uh, and a power okay in this case n equal one half so we can use a, a general power rule for this problem directly so so we can write this one as d over dx x plus 1 over x minus 1 to uh, 1 half to the square root so let's use a general power rule now according to general power rule 1 half x plus 1 over x minus 1 negative 1 half okay n fx n minus 1 times the derivative of the uh, inside function so the function is x plus 1 over x minus 1 for that we use the a quotient rule okay so we leave it like that so one half x plus one x minus one negative one half so let's use the quotient rule so it is v uh, u prime minus u uh, v prime over uh, v squared okay so you can see that's the u term that's the v term <coughs> don't change the order so the formula was v u prime u v prime uh, over v square that's the quotient rule <coughs> so it's a quotient rule here now we can simplify this a little bit uh, so uh, we still don't do anything with the uh, actually what you can do you can now expand this one so we can write one half so we can write this one as x plus 1 to the 1 a negative 1 half power x minus 1 to the negative 1 half power. You can write it like that. You can break it into 2. So let's simplify the top. So when you simplify the top, what happens? You, have multi you can multiply by the negative sign. So you get negative x, negative 1. So that means x and negative x, x get cancelled. So these two get cancelled. Uh, so you get uh, negative 2 at the top. Okay, so you get negative 2 divided by x minus 1 squared now you can see further simplification so you can see these two get cancelled with that two uh, so you only get a negative sign and also in the bottom you can combine the two you have negative one half power uh, you have a negative one half power and then uh, we have two so that means you're gonna get three halves okay so that means the uh, bottom simply gonna be uh, similar so bottom simply going to be uh, so it's a negative negative so bottom simply going to be uh, so x plus one negative one half you can bring it down so that means it's going to be x plus one to the half power and the other one simply going to be negative one to the three halves all right but you have a two and a negative one half so you're going to combine these two so you're going to be three halves uh, now we can use this using the radical notation because one half means the square root so you can combine you can take the one half power as a square root and you can combine the other two so that means you can simply write this one as negative one over you can combine the two so it's x plus one x minus one you can write this one as a cube and a square root okay so that's the final answer so what happened here so we use this property so if we have x 3 square root um, so this simply you this is simply x 3 halves okay so that's the idea so you can write it like that you can put the power inside uh, the root outside okay so for example if you have y to the 5 7 7 is the root y 5th is the power so that means it is y to the 5th the 7th root okay so that's the kind of idea okay so uh, you can see i mean you need a little bit of algebra um, uh, to simplify this problem okay uh, but the calculus part is not that difficult so that comes like easily but you need some algebra to completely simplify the problem good uh, so th that's about all those uh, major types now what we're gonna do we're gonna cover um, the other functions for example uh, what are the formulas for trigonometry functions what are the formula for exponential logarithmic uh, inverse trig and hyperbolic functions so let's talk about that now um, so next uh, we're gonna do the trigonometry functions okay so trigonometry functions
trigonometric function. Good. So, uh, so what are the formulas that we have? Uh, so we have uh, d over dx uh, sine x, d over dx sine x, uh, which is equal to cosine x, um, and then uh, d over dx cosine x, which is equal to negative sine x, and then uh, d over dx tan x which is equal to secant squared x and then we have d by dx uh, cotangent x which is negative cosecant squared x and then we have d by dx uh, secant x which is secant x uh, tan x and we have d by dx uh, cosecant x which is negative cosecant x cotangent x and how to remember and you can see that all these functions on the right side has a negative sign uh, c in front and all those functions are negative so that's how you remember you can see the functions with the c in front has the has a negative sign in the derivative the other functions are all positive other functions are all positive um good and then um uh, yeah we can talk about the hyperbolic functions also so uh, so let's talk about uh, that do later so um so let's um have this one in a box so these are the uh, formulas for uh, trig functions okay so let's start uh, let's do this problem so let's say um, uh, the derivative of uh, 2 sin x uh, we know that 2 is a constant so we take it out and according to the table, uh, derivative of sine is cosine x, so that means 2 cosine x. Uh, the next one, let's say d over dx, uh, 4 secant x cube. So is, uh, you can see that this is not just x, it's x cube, so that means you have to use a chain rule. Uh, so this is uh, simple, we know that 4 is a constant, so derivative of secant is secant tan according to the formula so that means this is going to be secant no change and tan no change and then multiply by the inside function derivative of the inside function um so in this case which is 3x squared so we're going to multiply by that just to avoid confusion we normally bring it in front and then we can write um, you can leave the final answer as 12x squared secant x cube tan x cube okay so uh, the next problem so let's say we have d by dx uh, tan square root x again we have to use the uh, chain rule actually so that's coming from the chain rule okay so same thing you have to use the chain rule again because this is not just x uh, so, so this is the chain rule. Uh, uh, first, this is a tan function. If it's a tan function, we know it is secant squared, so we write that first. So it is secant squared square root x, no change to the inside function, and then multiply by the derivative of the uh, inside function. So that is one half x to the negative one half, the square function, and then we can simplify this. How to simplify? You can bring the x square root down. Uh, to the denominator so that means this is going to be secant squared square root x divided by 2 square root x okay so that's the uh, derivative of that function using the chain rule and this is where we use the uh, chain rule we multiply by the derivative of the inside function um, 
so and you can see that there are no changes to uh, this function okay no changes see the sitting x it's the same thing no changes only you multiply by the derivative of the inside function that's the only part coming out you have the extra term multiply by the derivative of the inside function so let's do more uh, how about uh, this one so let's say we have uh, d by dx uh, cosecant x squared plus 3x okay again just follow the table and see what's the derivative of the uh, major function which is a cosecant x so it's a cosecant means negative cosecant you just repeat the inside function without any changes times cotangent again no changes to the inside function and then we can multiply by the derivative of the inside function so it's x squared plus 3x prime okay that's the chain rule part okay so it is negative uh, cosecant x squared plus 3x cotangent x x squared plus 3x and then you can see here we have um, the derivative is 2x plus 3 um, so that means the final answer is negative we normally put that in front to avoid confusion and then cosecant uh, x squared plus 3x cotangent x squared plus 3x okay so that's the final answer for that um, how about these two special problems so let's do the derivative of sine squared x so uh, what is this this you can rewrite if you want just to make it clear this is sine x squared so this is a general power rule situation you have function and a power okay so according to general power rule uh, this is simply going to be um, uh, you can see 2 sine x to the first power according to general power rule and then multiply by the derivative of the inside function so that, and then you multiply the derivative of the inside function that means the derivative of uh, sine x that's the inside function so what you get is 2 uh, sine x that's the first power and derivative of sine is cosine x now we know that uh, there's a formula uh, from trigonometry uh, which says that uh, sine 2 theta equal to sine theta cosine theta according to that this is simply going to be sine 2x okay this is simply going to be uh, sine 2x uh, the formula that we use is uh, you know that the sine to theta equal to sine theta cosine theta okay so we use that formula okay so now let's do this problem so i'm going to slightly change the problem let's say we have sine x squared now this is actually easy so um so what you're going to do is sine means cosine so it's a cosine x squared no change and then multiply by the derivative of the inside function which is 2x uh, just to avoid confusion we write 2x in front so it is 2x cosine x squared so you can see that is simple uh, and you get completely different answers for those two okay so please make sure that you understand the uh, difference between the two uh, and then how about this one so d over dx x squared sine x so you can you need the parenthesis here uh, so we use a product rule here so for the product rule uh, u v prime u p prime plus uh, v u prime okay uh, so we assume that the first one is u and the, uh, the next one is v okay good now let's find the derivative so the x squared derivative of sine means cosine x plus sine x derivative of x squared is 2x uh, now what we can do uh, just like a just move turns around we can do much here so it's x squared uh, 
cosine x plus 2x plus sine x. Okay, that's what uh, we get. Um, so let's do uh, maybe like three more little complicated examples. Um, good. So how about this one? Let's say we have d over dt. Uh, secant t plus uh, tan t to the fifth power. Again, it's a general power rule problem. So you have a function to a power, so we can write the power. Then secant t plus tan t, you subtract one from the power and then multiply by the derivative of the inside function which is secant t plus tan t um so we have five secant t plus tan t to the fourth power now we're going to take the derivative of these functions okay so what are the derivatives a secant derivative is secant tan so the secant t uh, tan t a derivative of tan means secant square t. Uh, see whether we can simplify. Actually, what we can do is we can factor secant x out. So we have 5 here, and then we have secant t out as a factor. So we're going to get secant t plus tan t to the fourth power. Once you take secant out, you're going to get tan t plus secant t. That's exactly match with the other term. So that means you can combine the two. So you have five uh, secant t secant t plus tan t to the fifth part. Okay, so that's what you get as the final answer. Let's do uh, maybe two more. Uh, how about this one? D over d x. 2 sine squared x minus 10 squared x and you can see uh, for both of them you have to use the uh, chain rule um, because sine squared you can have sine x squared tan squared you can have tan x squared okay after writing that from the first term you get 2 times 2 sine x times the derivative of the inside function which is cosine x minus same thing to tan x tan x is the one actually is the first power here also first power and then the derivative of the inside function which is secant squared x good um, I mean you cannot do much here so we just simplify uh, slightly uh, so what we can do is actually we can combine these two uh, we got 2 sine x cosine x that is sine 2x the double angle formula so this can be 2 sine 2x according to the double angle formula minus here we just leave it to uh, tan x secant uh, squared x okay other way to write this one is you can write this one as 2 sine x uh, secant uh, cube x but just the same thing not much okay so let's do one last problem so let's say we have d over d theta 2 theta sine theta square root uh, again this is a general power rule uh, problem uh, so you can write this one as d over d theta 2 theta sine theta one half power so according to the general power rule this is one half two theta sine theta negative one half times the derivative of the uh, inside function which is two theta sine theta okay so use the um, product rule for that so if you use the product rule so one half two theta sine theta negative one half from the product rule you get you take the derivative you write uh, you take the uh, 
actually before we do that we can uh, do a simplification here so what the simplification is you can see that you can cancel this two with that two okay so that means after we remove that uh, you can have a little little simplified version here uh, so that means you're gonna get two theta sine theta uh, negative one half and then what's gonna happen here you only have theta so take the derivative that's one rewrite the other term plus uh, theta take the derivative that is cosine theta so that's what you get uh, and then what you can do you can bring it down and simplify um, write it as just one term so your final answer gonna be sine theta plus theta cosine theta divided by 2 theta sine theta square root okay so that's what you get as the uh, uh, final answer for that good um, so let's talk about the next topic the exponential functions uh, so what what results uh, we know about exponential there are three formulas for exponential functions um, so exponential functions exponential functions uh, so what are the three formulas uh, so we have the uh, the basic formula so it is d over dx e to the x so if you are e to the x we know that you get e x back okay this is one of the functions we are uh, once you take the derivative you get the fun same function back okay, that's very interesting and then uh, we can generalize this um, so what's the general version of that so when you have e uh, when you have uh, the derivative e to some function so it's not just e but some function so you can see this is very similar so it is e no change you just repeat the function and only multiply by the derivative of that function uh, and then we also have one more formula so what happened uh, instead of e uh, you have some other base like a so a to a function so if you have a to a function no much change it is a to the function f prime x we have extra term coming you need to multiply by ln a that's the extra term but otherwise they are pretty much the same and those are the three formulas that you need for uh, taking derivatives of exponential functions okay so there are three formulas there uh, okay so let's try to do uh, some problem from each type uh, so let's start with uh, 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 this problem so let's say we have uh, d by dx uh, e to the 2x so according to the formula what you're going to do is you repeat the function multiply by the derivative of the uh, fx function the derivative of that function is uh, so derivative of that function is simply 2 so you multiply by 2 so you write the final answer as 2 e to x okay so final answer okay so let's do a product problem so let's do this one uh, x cube e x we need the parentheses around uh, so here is a product rule according to the product rule we write the fun first function take the derivative of the second function plus you write the second function take the derivative of the first function okay v u prime u v prime now what's going to happen is x cube we know that derivative of e x is e x again so we leave it like that and then we have e x derivative is 3 x squared and if you like just rewrite this in a nice way we have x 3 e x plus 3 x squared e x uh, that's one way to write it uh, and also like when you have exponential function you can always factor the ex term 
uh, and also in this case you can factor x squared also so if you want but this is okay this is good enough but if you need further simplification you can write this one as you can you can say you can pull out uh, x squared and uh, ex so if you pull out x squared and ex you get here x plus uh, 3 okay so this is very useful and why we even do that because especially in calc 1 uh, if you want to find the critical points you have to do that because you need to completely factor so in that problem this is very useful okay so useful for uh, critical points okay useful uh, when finding uh, critical points okay so when you find critical point this is useful because you need to completely factor okay good uh, so let's do uh, let's do uh, one more problem so we can do like a uh, little bit of extra, of extra problem because this is one of the major uh, types so d over dx how about this one 10 e negative x fifth um, again so how we do it um, so we're going to do the second version of this e to the fx version so 10 is a constant e repeat the function no change and multiply by the derivative of the uh, fx function so we multiply by the derivative of the uh, derivative of the negative x over fifth uh, so let's do that so it is 10 e negative x fifth derivative is simply negative one fifth now you can simplify this a little bit you have 10 and 1 fifth so it is negative 2 and then e to the negative x fifth so that is the uh, final answer for that so let's do a few more so let's do a uh, problem with a different variable so let's do problem with uh, theta so d over d theta uh, e to the theta squared plus 1 so you can see here the uh, function is uh, inside function theta squared plus 1. So that means your derivative is going to be, when you have e, you just repeat the function. So it's e theta squared plus 1, no change. And then multiply by the derivative of the inside function. Okay. Uh, so that means uh, e theta squared plus 1, uh, the derivative of the inside function 2 theta. So what we normally do is, uh, we don't leave it like that. We're going to bring... Uh, 2 theta in front and we write this one as 2 theta e to the theta squared plus 1 so that is the final answer um, and then uh, let's do uh, this problem so let's say uh, d by dx uh, e to the uh, let's say square root x so again same argument so when you have exponential function we repeat the function multiply by the derivative of the inside function so in this case square root x so that means it is one half x to the negative one half and if you write uh, this with the positive uh, power you can write this one as e to the square root x divided by two square root x okay so it's very clear um how about uh, this one d over dt e to the tan t so be careful when the variable is t because it's going to confuse me with tan. Uh, same argument. E, t, um, e to the uh, tan t. And then multiply by the derivative of the tan t which is secant squared t. Uh, so you can leave it like that. Uh, uh, we really don't need the dot here. But that's just an exaggeration. Uh, good. Uh, and how about this one? Uh, so just a little bit of complicated e to the cosine theta squared so you can see we have a e and then we have cosine and then we have um, a squared function okay so you have three functions here so what we do every time you multiply by the derivative of the inside function multiply by the derivative of the inside function I'm going to do this step by step just to make it clear so let's start the first function that is the exponential function so it is e uh, cosine theta squared and what we do now 
multiply by the derivative of the inside function in this case the inside function is this so we multiply by the derivative of that so that means uh, cosine theta squared the derivative so that's the um, first one once you use the chain rule so now let's try to do the, that uh, find derivative of that so that means the next step would be e cosine theta squared so let's try to find the derivative of the inside function it's a cosine function that means it is negative sine theta squared no change and then again multiply by the derivative of the inside function in this case the inside function is theta squared see you every time you multiply by the derivative of the inside function okay so you can see in this case the uh, uh, inside so first the uh, function was cosine theta squared and then uh, we can jump to the next one uh, so then here the inside function is that okay so that's what you get now what we can do we can multiply by that uh, that's easy to find the derivative of that so that means you're going to get uh, e cosine theta squared uh, we have a negative sine squared uh, theta squared and here we get two theta so finally we can write this in a proper way uh, what we normally do is we write the negative sign first and the numbers and then we write theta uh, when we have exponential function we normally write the exponential function next and then the other trig functions okay so this is kind of a customary way to do it okay so that's the final answer for um, oh no that's my square here uh, i think i made a mistake here i had extra uh, square so there's no square here okay let's try that part again uh so uh, yeah yeah so i just add a square there so that's so, I'm gonna that. so that's the final answer uh for this problem okay so you can see so what we did every time you multiply by the derivative of the inside function okay um uh, so you can see so this is the uh, first one that we get uh and then um so we take the derivative of the cosine theta squared and then do the derivative of the uh, theta squared that's it okay there are two inside functions a cosine and theta squared so that's it okay so and then after that we write the uh, solution like that so that's the kind of idea okay let's do um you know just just practice this more i'm going to do two more problems just to tell you like how it works so every time multiply by the derivative of the inside function that's what you need to remember so let's we have d over dx uh, x cube e x squared okay so uh, so what's gonna happen now is as you can see uh, we had is uh, first we had to use the product rule so according to the product rule we write the first function as it is take the derivative of the second function and write the second function as it is take the derivative of the first function uh, <coughs> so again what's the formula uh, u v prime v u prime okay good uh, so then we have x3 if you take the derivative it is e x squared multiplied by the derivative of the inside function which is 2x plus e x squared derivative is 3 x squared okay so let's see whether we can simplify this a little bit so if you simplify we get 2 e x squared x fourth plus 3 uh, e x squared x squared so we can leave it like that or we can write the factored form or either this is good good enough but if you need a factored form you can see what are the factors you can get you can get um, e x squared is a factor x squared is a factor from the first term you get 2 x squared from the other term you get 3 so those are the factors you get okay that's a complete factorized version of that and then you can see that uh, this function is completely positive or zero okay so you can see this is greater than or equal to zero that means uh, if x not equal to zero it is increasing function okay it's only increases because there it is has to be positive but those are like other things that you use in calc one uh, now uh, so let's do maybe uh, uh, 
two more examples. So how about uh, this one using the other formula? So the derivative of 5, 3x plus 1. According to the third formula, you can see when you have other bases, we do the same thing. So the 5, 3x plus 1, you repeat. Multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is 3, and then you have extra term ln 5, okay, to the ln of the base. Um, and then, I mean, there are no, like, you know, much uh, better ways to write this one. You can probably write 3 in front, and then we have uh, times 5, 3x plus 1, uh, ln 5, okay, maybe this one. Uh, great. And how about this one? So d by dx, uh, 2 to the x squared. Um, very similar problem. So it's 2x squared. Take the derivative of the inside function, uh, which is uh, 2x times ln2. Uh, you can simplify this a little bit. Uh, so what we can do is uh, we can combine the twos. So that means 2x squared plus um, you get one more and then we have x and ln2 so that's the uh, final answer for that um, so as the one last problem uh, let's try to do this one so this is d by dx uh, let's say one fourth x e to the 4x minus 116 e to the 4x so do the first one uh, we can use the product rule uh, so you're going to get uh, 1 fourth if you use the product rule for the first one uh, so it is you write the uh, you take the derivative of the first one rewrite the second one as it is plus uh, write the first one as it is take the, the second one which is uh, 4e 4x now it is clear, I think. Okay, and then minus uh, one over sixteen. Take the derivative, which is four times e to the four x. So you can see there are some simplification here. Uh, for example, if you simplify, this is uh, one fourth uh, e to the four x. That's exactly the same as the first term. So that means you can cancel uh, these two terms. So it's going to go away. And then after that, you can see you can cancel 4 with 4. So uh, your final answer is simply going to be uh, x e to the 4x. Okay. So uh, that means according to the anti derivative results, if you integrate x e to the 4x, you should get the long expression. Okay. So we're going to learn that later how to actually do that. Okay. So if you integrate this one, you should get the long one. This is one of the example we can do later. So we can use a technique called integration by parts. Integration by parts. So that's uh, we learn in uh, Calc 2. Okay, so yeah. Okay, so that's, that's about that. Um, next, uh, we're gonna uh, learn about uh, logarithmic functions. So how about this problem? Uh, uh, with five functions so let's say cosine um, uh, just put some numbers okay so uh, cosine let's say cube inside you have 10 and then you have exponential function and inside you have secant uh, square root x so you can see how many functions we have we have um, cube and the cosine, tangent, exponential, secant, square. So there are six functions there. So every time, what are you going to do? Multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So the first function, let's try to identify the first function. So this is like cosine some function to the cube. Okay, so that's what it looks like. So you have a cube and then you have a cosine, not cosine, x, cosine some function, okay, like that. So that means we can use the general power rule for this problem. We can use the general power rule. So if you use the general power rule, the first term going to be, so this can be lengthy, okay? So it is, because it's a, like a function to a power. So that means 3 cosine 
going to be 2 now because you subtract 1 and whatever inside. So we're going to multiply by, we're going to put whatever inside, no change. So 10 e to the secant uh, square root x. Okay, good. What's the next step? Multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So what's the inside function? In this case, uh, so next function is because you you done with the um, power function. Next function is the cosine function. So let's multiply the derivative of the cosine function. Uh, that's going to be a negative sine whatever the rest. So we can repeat that. So tan e to the secant square root x. So we're done with the uh, first inside function. Good. Uh, the cosine. Now we go on to the next one. So what is the next inside function? So the uh, next inside function is uh, the tan part. So this is the next inside function. So we can multiply by the derivative of that. So let's do that. So times the whole thing. Okay. So derivative of tan. That means it is secant uh, squared whatever the function. So it is e secant square root x. Uh, you don't need a uh, parenthesis around because this function is clear in this time. Again, now we multiply by the inside function again. If you want, you can add a parenthesis. That's okay, but you don't need that. Now, what's the next inside function? This is the next inside function. Multiply by the derivative of that. So times the derivative is, if it is exponential function, we know that the, it's, it's, uh, you can repeat the function, no changes, and then again multiply by the derivative of the inside function. That's inside function, secant. So multiply by that. So if you multiply by that, it's a secant. So that means secant tan. So you're going to get uh, secant uh, square root x tan square root x. We still have one more inside function. This is the next inside function. So you can multiply by that. So if you multiply by that, you get one half x to the negative one half. So that is the final. So what we can do is you can uh, you know combine them in a nice way and write the final answer so this still can be a little lengthy uh, so i'm going to start somewhere here because it's a, a long problem so what we have we can write numbers first so i'm going to go negative there's a negative sign three halves and then we normally write the exponential function also we can bring the uh, negative uh, half that term down so and with the exponential function first so i'm going to write e uh, secant square root x divided by uh, square root x. So we have that. And then we can write the uh, cosine squared term. So we have cosine squared uh, tan e to the secant square root x. And then uh, uh, what we have is uh, times the sine function you can write next sine again tan e secant square root x and then uh, we have uh, c, uh, secant squared so you can write the secant squared now so we have secant squared e secant square root x uh, and then we have the secant and tan terms. So you can write secant square root x, or tan square root x. So that's the final answer. But you can see it's lengthy. But you see uh, what you did is every time you multiply by the derivative of the inside function, you jump one by one. Okay, just jump to the next one, jump to the next one. Okay, so if you think about this again, we start with the power function and then go to the uh, so we can write the steps that we did. So we start with, yeah, so this can be useful. So we start with the uh, cube function. Then you uh, went to the cosine function. Uh, then you went to the, uh, of the cosine, then you went to the tan function. Uh, after the tan, uh, then you went to the, uh, so we have, we take the derivative of tan, and then uh, we have the exponential function. Uh, and then after the exponential function, uh, we went to the secant function. And then we went to the square root function. Uh, yeah. 
So those are the steps that we went by. So you start with the cube and write the cosine and then write the tangent and then write the exponential and then write the secant and then square. So the best thing would be just try to rewrite it, just to rewrite it and see whether you can get, because if you can do this, you can do any problem. Okay, so it's very clear. Okay, let's, uh, let's do one last problem. Uh, but it's not lengthy, but it's like interesting problem. So uh, the next one, uh, we can do, um, let's say, d over dt, uh, e to the t tan t. Okay. So again, it's exponential function. That means you repeat the function, no change, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside function. Good. So. Uh, you have to use the product rule. So, what is e t uh, tan t? The derivative of this one is the, the derivative of the first term. Rewrite the next one and then write t, take the derivative of the uh, second term, which is secant square t. Now, what we do, we can rewrite them uh, uh, with some simplification. So, we say e t tan t. Here it simply become tan t uh, plus tan t plus t secant square t. t secant square t. So that's the final answer. Okay, so that's about that. So next, uh, what we're going to do, uh, we're going to go to the next important topic, uh, the logarithmic uh, functions. Okay, logarithmic functions. So let's to go to uh, that topic now. Logarithmic functions. logarithmic functions um, when you talk about in in calculus uh, we can use the base e uh, so that's one of the uh, result that we use and but if you only use other bases you know that you can you can convert that uh, because uh, we have this this uh, result uh, what it says that uh, log a to b x is simply equals to uh, what we can do uh, we can just take the uh, natural log of uh, uh, so uh, let's like we don't need uh, this side like that so when you have something like uh, log a to b log log uh, base a to b this is simply equals to uh, you can pick any base you like uh, so, for example, if you use uh, natural log, so you can write this one as ln b over ln a. So, that means using this result, you can always convert any base problem to natural natural log. So, that means, uh, but uh, when you take the derivatives, you want to make sure that you always use a natural log. But if there is any other base, you can use this uh, result to convert that into natural base. Okay. Good. Mm. So uh, now what we're gonna do? Uh, so let's go with the uh, natural uh, log uh, problem. And also, uh, we also know some other other facts about natural log and exponential function. So we can use those also to uh, kind of simplify problems. Uh, good. So uh, so one other result that we know is uh, we know that uh, if we have a log. Uh, a b equal c which is equal to simply uh, a to the c equal b so we can already like that always okay the a is the base c is the uh, power and b is the number okay so you can always use the conversion so what we know is <coughs> we know our two major results for derivatives of natural log functions um, so it is uh, d over dx uh, ln we use the absolute values uh, 1 of x that's the first result uh, the other result is if you have uh, ln uh, some function ln some function it is simply the function goes down the derivative goes to the top okay so that's the those are the two uh, major formulas uh, for derivatives of uh, log function so you can see we use a natural log ln base ln here okay so let's try to do some problems from this uh, so we can have this, this first problem 
So let's say d by dx x to the fifth power ln x. Again, you can use the uh, product rule here. So uh, one more thing, uh, we need a parenthesis around because there are two functions. So you need the parenthesis. So and then again, we're going to consider the u function. We're going to consider the u function and the v function. That's the u function and the v function. So let's use the result. Uh, we know the uh, derivative result is again, it is u v prime, uh, v u prime. Okay, u v prime, v u prime. And with the plus sign. There's no order. You can write anything you like first. Good. So, um, so let's take the derivative of the first one. 5x to the fourth. We write the next one. Plus, we write the next, uh, the other one, and take the derivative of the uh, second one. Uh, so, derivative of the second one is 1 over x. Okay. Now, you can see there is a nice simplification here. Uh, you can see the first one is uh, 5x fourth ln x no change but here you can see this can be simply x to the fourth power so that we can leave as the uh, final answer okay there is a nice simplification like that we need here ln because it's derivative of ln is one of x okay um so that's the first one so let's do the second one so um how about this one d over dx a natural log 2 x plus 1. Uh, now we can use the second formula. According to the second formula, so this is the fx function. Okay, so that's the fx function. So that means you write the function down and the derivative on top. Okay, so that means simply going to be 2x plus 1. The derivative of 2x plus 1 is 2. So that's the uh, answer for that. So 2 over 2x plus 1. Good. Um, a little complicated one uh, d over dx let's say ln x to the fifth power minus uh, x to the cube again the function goes down so the function is x to the fifth power minus x to the cube and take the derivatives the derivative of the first function is 5x to the fourth the second function is 3x squared and now what's going to happen you can cancel common terms what's the common uh, common factor you can see x squared is a common factor so we're going to divide each term by x squared so you finally end up getting 5x squared minus 3 over if you divide by x squared it is x3 minus 1 x3 minus x okay because we divide by x squared x3 uh, minus x so that is the uh, final answer good uh, now let's try to do an interesting problem using uh, that has a trigonometric function so what about this one d by dx this is a special problem okay you can see this is a special problem natural log sin x so this also works even if you don't have the absolute sign but when you don't have absolute sign you have to be careful that function has to be positive because this is natural log it's a log function the, the, it's uh, the uh, whatever you plug in has to be positive okay the same argument function goes down the derivative of the bottom function goes up derivative of sine is cosine now you can see cosine over sine means cotangent. So that's what you get. So you get cotangent when you take the derivative of ln sine. Okay. A similar one, d by dx. Uh, what about secant? Uh, not the secant, uh, sine x. Yeah, cosine x. Okay. Cosine x. If we do cosine x, it's similar. So cosine goes down. Our derivative of cosine means negative sine x. If you write the negative sign in front, this is negative tan x. Okay. So this is also we're gonna we're gonna talk about these two later in Calc 2 class uh, because you try to integrate these two functions. 
you try to integrate tangent and cotangent and you can see you right now you know the answer because if you know the derivative you automatically know the integral because if the the integral of cotangent should be ln sin x according to this result same argument are uh, the integral of tangent has to be negative ln cosine x the negative sign flip the term inside so that means the integral of tangent has to be according to this result i'm going to write that uh, so what's going to happen you can see this, this is a result already the integral of tangent x has to be according to this result negative ln uh, cosine x so right plus c now the negative sign flip the term inside that means it's going to be ln secant x plus c so we can see we already proved the result but this is a identity that we use in um, calculus okay so integral of tangent x is uh, natural log secant x okay good so uh so let's do a uh, few more uh, that involve those log functions so there are really interesting uh, results here uh, so how about uh, this one so the next one is uh, let's say d over d theta uh, natural log secant theta plus tangent theta really nice one okay take the derivative of natural log secant theta plus tangent theta but we know that uh, when you have function like that the function goes down so the function is secant theta plus tangent theta and on the top the derivative of the on the bottom function derivative of secant means secant tan so secant theta tan theta derivative of tangent is uh, secant square theta okay so what we use is we put the function on the down and the derivative on top okay that's the idea okay now let's simplify you can see secant theta is common so if you take secant theta out you're gonna as a factor you're gonna get tan theta plus secant theta in the bottom the secant theta plus tangent theta so what happened now you can see this term get cancelled see let's get cancelled you simply end up getting secant theta so that tells you a lot that means we have a new formula that means the integral of secant has to be ln secant theta plus tan theta okay so this tells you that uh, so let's try it so this it's this tells you that uh, this tells you that the integral of secant theta d theta has to be ln secant theta plus tangent theta plus c so that's the formula again uh, we do the same thing uh, in our calculus 2 class okay so but we do we prove that so that's the result okay so that's one result okay let's do uh, maybe uh, one last problem uh, before you move on to the other type uh, so d o d t how about ln uh, 4 t squared minus 1 the let's see some root like fourth root okay something like that um so you can do this problem in a difficult way and easy way a uh, difficult way is just consider this whole thing uh, like ln uh, inside the function as the uh, fx but we are not going to do it okay so the one way to do this is consider this function as fx and use the fx f prime f prime x or fx formula instead what we can do we can simplify the log function but this is much easier so this one you can write as d over dt uh, natural log the function is 4t squared minus 1 1 fourth we know that when you have a log this 1 fourth you can take it out 
okay you can take it out so that means you can re rewrite this problem as one fourth you take it out t over dt natural log 40 squared minus this is very easy to do okay now we use a formula so if you use a formula now uh, you will get one fourth function goes down 40 squared minus one the derivative goes to the top the derivative of this function is uh, four times two t right four times two t uh, so you can see uh, four and four get cancelled so you simply end up getting uh, two t uh, two t over four t squared minus one okay so that's the answer in a much easier way but if you just use the whole function that be complicated so we don't do that we normally simplify the uh, natural log it's going to make the calculation easier good so let's talk about what happened if you have a other base like not this base but this one base so we have this formula so we have d over dx log let's say base a fx so something like that with other base so if you have other base what's going to happen it's going to be pretty much the same but you have to need to divide by ln a so what you do uh, so we have our fx f prime x as before but you divide by ln a so that's the only difference now okay so just divide by ln a if you have any other base good uh, so let's do just two problems from this one just to see so we have d over dx uh, let's say log 3 x squared plus 5 so if you have that so it's going to be a uh, function goes down x squared plus 5 divided by ln 3 in this case and the derivative goes to the top derivative is simply 2x uh, you can see you can simplify so we leave it like that uh, so let's do one more uh, what is the derivative of d over dx uh, log uh, cosecant x so if you have log uh, cosecant x okay when you write just log what does that mean uh, when you write just log we mean that the base is 10 okay so the base is 10 when you just write log we assume that the base is 10 okay so the base 10 we normally don't write that we just write log so be careful with that and also but in computer science when you write log they mean the base 2 okay so let's write that in cs in computer science uh, log mean uh, log 2 the base 2 okay so you have to be careful with these uh, special situations okay <clears throat> now uh, so what we have so we use the same result so we can write this one as the function goes down uh, ln 10 now and then derivative uh, secant you have, when you have cosecant uh, derivative is cosec negative cosecant cotangent so it's become negative uh, cosecant x a negative cosecant x and cotangent x and you can see cosecant cosecant get cancelled so you simply get uh, so yes so you simply get a negative cotangent x over ln 10 cotangent x not cotangent t cotangent x sorry uh, cotangent x over ln so that's what you get okay so let's see uh, a little bit of summary of uh, what we did and what kind of formulas uh, we have so far so we need to so let's talk about a summary. summary so far okay uh, so what we have is uh, when you have so we are trying to take derivatives okay so uh, so what's going to happen is we know if you have 
x n we know the formula which is n x n minus 1 and then we have the general formula when you have uh, f x to the n it is simply n f x n minus 1 times f prime x okay and then uh, what we have is uh, we have efx so we have uh, e to the fx and we have actually ex first we know ex if we have e to the x uh, it is easy uh, so just go with the uh, general case so when you have e to the fx that we can do uh, it is e to the fx no change multiply by the derivative and then we talk about a to the fx a to the fx so uh, so when you have a to the fx a to the fx so what's going to happen a to the fx f prime x and then we multiply by ln a so now the next situation is what are you going to do um, if you have if you need to take the derivative of a function to a function like as a power like that so if you get a situation like that uh, so this can be complicated because we don't know what to do because the, none of them are constant in the first one n was a constant in the second one this was a constant okay now so that means you can do both cases in the first one n is a constant so n is a constant Uh, in the second one, uh, a is a constant, or a or e. But now in the in this one, none of them are constant. Either power or the base, none of them are constant. Okay, so here the power is a constant. So this is power. It's a constant. Here the base is a constant. So now what we are going to talk about is what if none of them are constant so that means we don't know what uh, this case so that means we need a we need a new result so this is what we call the uh, logarithmic differentiation so let's talk about the logarithmic differentiation you need that to do this problem so uh, logarithmic differentiation Okay, so this is especially uh, useful in uh, two major cases. So we're going to talk about one by one. Type one is, so let's say type one. In the type one, you're going to see product of, product or division. Uh, of several functions. So when you have product or division of several functions, you can use the uh, logarithmic differentiation. So let's do a problem. Uh, so let's say uh, find, uh, let's say find uh, y prime if y equal, let's say x to the fourth power uh, x cubed minus two square root and then divided by uh, x to the uh, fifth to so the fifth power uh, uh, and then x to the fifth power x uh, plus one something like that okay if you just have x to the fifth power plus x uh, plus one uh, you need to simplify that first okay so let's say like you get something like that you can see that it is not just one function but there are more than uh, two functions if you have two functions you can use a product rule but since you have three functions you cannot use a product rule i mean you can use you can do for two first and then uh, you can do that product again but that can be complicated okay 
So what we can do, we can use this uh, logarithmic differentiation for this problem. So what we can do, we take, uh, so the steps are, if you want to do that kind of problem, so we can do uh, take natural log, take what we normally call take ln of both sides first. Okay, that's what we do. So if you take the natural log of both sides, this is going to be ln y on this side. Uh, and what's going to happen on the other side is, uh, as you can see, ln, uh, this expression, this whole expression. So we have x to the fourth, x3 minus 2 square root divided by x fifth plus x plus 1. Now what we can do, we know that when you have a sum, uh, uh, we know this result. Uh, we know that ln ab is equals to ln a plus ln b. And also when you have ln uh, c over d, the division, which is equal to ln c minus ln d. So we can use that uh, for this problem. That means using that, we can write this one as three natural log functions. We can write this one as ln x to the 4, the first function, plus ln x cubed minus 2 square root minus ln x to the 5th plus x plus 1. Now what we can do, now we take the derivative. Once you take the derivative, you can take the derivative of those functions separately. Okay, so take the derivative. So we can take the derivative. So once you take the derivative, uh, you can do that uh, one by one. So uh, actually, uh, you can see before we take the derivative, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to simplify this a little bit because you can see that you can bring this four in front and here one half power in front. So we do that first before we take the derivative. We discussed this before because it's going to make it make the problem simpler. So let's do that. Uh, but after that, we can take the derivative. So we can write this one as first uh, ln y, take the uh, 4 in front, so 4 ln x, and then the next one you can take 1 half uh, ln x cubed minus 2, and then we have minus ln, no change here, x to the fifth plus x plus 1. Good. Now we take the derivatives, okay? So taking derivatives, okay? So taking derivative, we had to use a chain rule for this part, ln y. So you have a function. So what we can do, uh, according to the chain rule, it's going to be one over y, and then multiply by dy over dx, okay? By the chain rule, and then on this side, this simply be uh, 4, 1 of x and then here 1 half this one function goes down the derivative goes to the top the same thing function goes down our derivative goes to the top good uh, if you can uh, go ahead and simplify uh, otherwise what will happen this is that dy over dx if you multiply both sides by y if you multiply both sides by y then this side gonna get cancelled see so other side you get y uh, you're gonna multiply by y um, and then you're gonna have here 4 of x I mean, you can't do much here so we have <coughs> um, 3 halves x squared over x3 minus 2 and here we have 5 x to the fourth plus one over x to the fifth plus x plus one. Now what we can do, we can replace y by original function. Uh, we know what is y, that's the original function. So which is uh, x to the fourth, x three minus two square root divided by x to the fifth plus x plus one. And then we can rewrite this four over x plus 3 halves x squared over x3 minus 2 minus 
x to the fifth plus x plus one, 5x to the fourth plus one. So that's what you get. Okay, that's the final answer. You can see that it's, it's won't be like, you know, you can do much with that. So you can leave it like that. Good, so that's the derivative of the function using the um, logarithmic differentiation. So let's talk about the second type, um, the type two. So in type two, what we can do, so let's talk about this type two, logarithmic differentiation type two. Uh, so this one uh, major thing is uh, used to find the derivative of use to find the derivative of Or something like this let's say y equal actually start it uh, here uh, yeah that's okay uh, like uh, you have a function to a function so you have a function and then you have a power like dx so like that so we, if you have something like that uh, then we use the logarithmic differentiation you have function to function none of them are constant yeah that's the case that we can do so if in this, if this is the case so, and then we do the, uh, take the natural log of both sides. Take uh, natural log. Take a uh, natural log of both sides. And after we do that, uh, it simply become the uh, product. So, we use the product rule. Okay. So, then after that, okay. So, natural log. Okay. Ln. Okay. And then, um, what we do is uh, differentiate so uh, differentiate uh, with respect to the variable with respect to x uh, using uh, product rule and implicit differentiation uh, i mean in this case you can simply say uh, the chain rule using the chain rule We can discuss the implicit differentiation next okay chain rule so we need the product rule and the chain rule uh, and then uh, what we do is uh, after that uh, solve for dy by dx okay so solve for dy by dx it's the last step okay so those are the uh, major steps uh, if you want to do a problem like that so let's do a problem so uh, let's say uh, find uh, the derivative of find the derivative of y equal let's do easiest one x to the x okay that's the easiest case that we can do it can be actually square root x i mean all the same so you see it's a function to function okay none of them are constants so uh so we're gonna follow these steps uh what are the first step uh so take the derivative okay so we can take the derivative so taking as a first step, uh, taking ln natural log of both sides. So if you do that, then what's going to happen on this side is going to be ln y on this side. The other side it is ln x to the x. What we do is we can bring this power out. Okay, so power out. So this is x ln x. Now you can see this is just a power a product. So we use the product rule on that side on the other side you use the chain rule because it's a function of some not x okay just y so that means you have to use the chain rule for that so let's do that uh, now uh, we take the derivative with respect to y okay, so taking derivative with respect to uh, not y x taking uh, derivative taking derivative uh, with respect to uh, x so what we have is uh, so d over dx ln y here we have uh, d over dx x ln x for this side you have this chain rule so if you use a chain rule uh, y goes down the derivative goes to the top that's a chain rule uh, 
and if it is not clear we can write it like that so the function is y so 1 over y and then multiply by the derivative of that so we can write like this so that's the same thing as y prime over y okay on the other side you have to use the product rule so if you the product rule is x ln x derivative plus ln x x derivative okay v u prime u v prime okay let's uh, find them so this x ln x derivative is 1 of x plus ln x uh, x derivative is 1 you can see this you can simplify cancel this me 1 so you're gonna get uh, 1 plus ln x so you get uh, now what we can do we're gonna multiply both sides by y so then you're gonna get dy over dx that's you're looking for is simply y times 1 plus ln x now what we can do we can replace by y y is x to the x uh, 1 plus ln x okay so that's the final answer you can see that it's not long okay it's not long but this is how we do it uh, so let's do another problem just another one that's it so let's say again find uh, the derivative of x sine x okay something like that just pick two functions it can be sine to cosine x to square root x anything you like just the same way so what we do you can just write the answer for this problem like that okay so what we're gonna do is um, um, we can take that as y and then take the natural log also there's another way to write it because we know there's an identity uh, when you have um, e to the ln x equal x so we can use uh, that fact as well so that's like another way to kind of uh, do these kind of problems rather than doing the doing this way let's do both ways let's do this way and then next let's do the other way okay so what's the first method we do uh, we can let y equal your function okay that's the first step if you get problem like that because then you can write the answer directly so we can pick this one as um, y and then uh, what's gonna happen ln y gonna be ln x sine x uh, so you need a parenthesis sine x comes out ln x now what we can do I uh, use the uh, just take the derivative with respect to x okay using chain rule and the uh, product rule get uh, so you're going to differentiate uh, with respect to x so if we do that this side is going to be y prime y always the other side you have your power uh, product rule is it L, uh, sine x uh, derivative of ln x is 1 of x plus ln x derivative of sine x is cosine x i mean you can't do much here so you just get y prime which is y times sine x over x uh, again you can't do much ln x cosine x now we replace by y which is x sine x times sine x over x plus ln x cosine x i mean you can do one thing here because x is in the denominator you can subtract uh, one from the uh, the powers you can if you want you can write like that other this is okay but if you want you can write this one as x sine x minus one times sine x okay uh, where you divide means subtract one power plus ln x cosine x okay so that's the answer but both are okay either this or that it doesn't really matter it's not much okay so uh, the other method what's the other method uh, we can use this result we know that uh, if we have uh, x if you have e ln x 
which is equal to x if x is positive okay we assume that x is positive and also we have ln ex this is true for any x okay for any x for any x that's only for positive x okay so we can use one of those results now uh, so i'm going to use the first one okay so if you use the first one now this is for how you can write this in one line like without this so we we have d by dx x sine x now this function you can write using this argument so it's e ln x sine x see you replace x by x sine x okay that whole thing you replace by that now the same thing we can simplify this a little so this is e Oh, actually, I forget the derivative. So let's <coughs> so let's try the derivative. It's a derivative of you replace this one by e ln x sine x. Now uh, we can simplify this a little as before. So this one you can write d over dx. Uh, e sine x comes in front ln x. Now we use the uh, derivative. So it's a e to a function. So that means e to a function means what? Uh, you, you write the e to the function. And then take the derivative of the inside function. That means sine x ln x using the product rule as before. Sine x 1 of x <coughs> plus ln x cosine x. Now you can see the first term here is simply you can simplify this back and you can see this is exactly the same as x to the sine x so that's uh, what happened okay so this is simply again the same thing uh, so this is the other way okay that we were talking about so we can use this technique uh, why this is again because you can rewrite back so you can uh, move this term back to where it was okay. and then we know that eln get cancelled like here so you can cancel eln x okay, x equal x <coughs> that's how you remember eln cancel so and using that argument you can say this is simply equals to x sine x again so so that's how we do it without that approach okay so you can use one of those log identities to do it um, in one line okay good so that's about it um, so what we do next is uh, we're going to talk about inverse uh, trigonometric functions so let's do uh, inverse uh, trigonometric functions uh, so inverse trigonometric functions inverse trigonometric functions So, uh, so what are the derivative of inverse trigonometric functions? So we can start with uh, d over dx, uh, sine inverse x. Sometimes we write arc sine x. I normally use sine inverse inverse notation. So this is one over uh, one minus x squared square root. Remember the format. And then we have d over dx, cosine inverse x. So what's happening is similar to sine but have a negative sign that's the only difference so it's one minus x squared square root and then we have uh, tan inverse so let's do uh, d over dx tan inverse x or the arc tan x so it is this is easy it is one plus x uh, 1 over 1 plus x squared and you can see there are no square root sign and then similarly you have d over dx cotangent inverse x same thing just a negative sign in front 1 plus x squared no square root and then we have um, secant x secant inverse x and there are two versions uh, so i'm going to use the most common version uh, which is which has a square absolute value and then x squared minus 1 square root so what is the relation 
you can see it's opposite. It's have x squared minus one. The other one has one minus x squared, and we have zero sign here because it has to be positive. If you just write x, it's not valid uh, for negative numbers. So you need absolute sign here. So be careful what version you have. Okay, some people write this without x, without absolute sign, and in some books they have with absolute sign. So depending on what domain, because we know that when you define the inverse functions, you can pick the domain you want. So they, so you can depending on different domain you pick, either you have to include the absolute sign or you don't want to. Okay, so it depends. So okay, and then the last one is d over dx uh, cosecant inverse x. Again, only difference is a negative sign in front. The rest is exactly the same as the other one. Okay, so those are the cases. Um, and you can see uh, the first one um, valid only between uh, 1 and negative 1. So we can see the, even the absolute less than 1. Uh, uh, the bottom line is valid when the uh, absolute value is uh, greater than 1. Uh, so this is valid for any, okay, any x. So x is uh, in between positive infinity or negative infinity so any values okay so x can be uh, in between positive infinity and negative that means any number but first one is only for absolute x less than one the bottom one is absolutely greater than one okay good so those are the uh, the formulas for inverse trigonometric functions okay good I always you know try to remember the domain where it works uh, because when you try to uh, think of application you need to be very careful with that uh, and also the different version of the secant function secant inverse uh, because some books don't use the absolute sign so you have to be careful with that because maybe you try to write but it doesn't work okay let's uh, do some examples mm. let's start with this one so let's say d over dx uh, what is sine inverse uh, 2x okay. something like that so we can use the chain rule um, so the according to the chain rule what you can do you simply treat uh, 2x as u uh, so if you do that uh, this is simply going to be uh, if you consider this as u if you can this as u uh, it is simply going to be 1 over 1 minus u squared square root and they multiply by u prime okay that's what happened so that means if you use that idea so it is simply 1 over 1 minus 2x squared square root times the derivative of the uh, u function that is 2 so if you can simplify this a little bit you can write 4 or uh, 1 uh, 2 over 1 minus you can write this one as 4x squared. So that is the uh, derivative of that function just using the chain rule. So here we use the chain rule. Okay. So chain rule is very important. Okay, let's do uh, maybe three more examples. Uh, and how about this? Let's say d over dx uh, tan inverse or the arctan x over 3 are the same argument so so it is 1 over uh, 1 plus whatever you have into x so it's x over 3 so we have x over 3 squared that's the formula says and then multiply by the derivative of uh, x over 3 so multiply by the derivative of this okay. so that's the chain rule so let's simplify this a little bit so you're going to get 1 over 1 plus if you simplify this is x squared over 9 and then this is one third and then how to simplify this first you can do is you can multiply the top and bottom by uh, 9 here um, so if you do that you're going to get 9 over 9 plus x squared and we have one third there now we can simplify this uh, 3 with that and you get 3 so that means finally your answer is going to be 3 over uh, 9 plus x squared. Good. And then uh, 
how about this one d over dx uh, c um, ck inverse x squared um, again we can use the formula so it's a 1 over uh, x squared absolute value and then this is x squared squared minus 1 square root uh, times the derivative of the inside function inside function x squared this time so which is 2x let's see that we can simplify we can actually cancel uh, uh, one of the x's uh, so when you cancel uh, one of the x's so what's going to happen is uh, so you can see this has to uh, carry the sign okay because uh, uh, x squared is absolutely is always that's always positive uh, but we have that uh, x there so that means uh, finally uh, what's going to happen is uh, so because this has to carry the uh, the sign so that means it's going to be uh, 2 over absolute x so yeah because this is x squared x squared is always positive so you don't need absolute sign and then then x one of the x's get cancelled so you get simply x and x uh, to the fourth power x to the fourth power minus one square root, okay or without the absolute sign because uh, the sign has to be there because there's x that carries a sign so this way you can Make sure that it carries a sign. Okay, good. So it can be positive or negative. Good. Uh, so how about this last problem? Uh, so let's say d over dt uh, tan inverse 2t plus 1 over 3. Uh, same argument. So we're going to go with 1 over uh, 1 plus 2t plus 1 over 3 uh, squared times the derivative of 2t plus 1 over 3. So you can write this one as as before. Uh, this is simply 1 plus 2t plus 1 squared over 9. Here it is going to be two thirds simply. Now again we multiply by the nine and expand. If you expand the bottom, you get two t squared, no forty squared plus forty, and then <coughs> um, and we have that plus one and plus nine, so plus ten. And then we have 2 over 3 as well okay so if you simplify uh, this uh, one of the threes get cancelled one of the twos get cancelled uh, so you're gonna get 6 divided by uh, you can divide by 2 so you're gonna get 2 t squared yeah actually it's, so it's not 6 it's 3 now because you can cancel one of the two so it's three divided by two t squared plus two t plus five okay so that's what you should get as the answer okay good and these are useful when you try to uh, do the uh, the integral because you can go backward um, we can discuss these kind of problems later um, so you need to do the completing square and then you end up getting this answer okay so uh, then uh, let's move on to uh, the implicit differentiation Now let's talk about the next uh, major topic, uh, what we call the implicit differentiation. So implicit, uh, implicit uh, differentiation. So this is useful when the uh, function is given as an implicit function, because there are a lot of situations where you cannot solve for y as a function of x. So in that case, what's going to happen? you're going to see uh, you're going to get an implicit function and then you still need to find the derivative of the function 
so what we need to do is we need to use the implicit uh, differentiation okay so and how we do it uh, so used uh, when uh, y is given uh, as a implicit function as a implicit function so we can do like a couple of examples so it will be clear as an implicit function um, good and then also uh, what the major major uh, tool is the chain rule okay so use uh, the chain rule use the chain rule use the chain rule to find the derivative okay use the chain rule uh, to find the derivative to find the derivative derivative uh, with respect to one variable okay derivative uh, with respect to one variable with respect to uh, one variable with respect to one variable uh, but normally we uh, pick x okay so normally uh, we're gonna pick x for that okay so let's just go to uh, directly uh, to some problems and we can see it's not that uh, difficult so let's start with this one so let's say find uh, dy by dx find dy by dx if if um, let's say you have x squared plus uh, y squared equal 4 something like that so you can see that y is not given as a function of x but as an implicit function okay so what we can do we simply use the chain rule okay so so we're gonna do differentiate so uh, so differentiate so differentiate uh, with respect to the x variable so if you do that so since this is the first example i'm going to show you all the steps but later you can see that you can skip some of the steps so you take the derivative of both sides so this is 4 so um, for the left side you have to use the chain rule so derivative of the first term is easy it is simply 2x now you know take the derivative of y squared you can see it is a function of y so we can use the chain rule and we can rewrite this problem like that so we can say by the chain rule you can re re rewrite this one as d over dy is a function of y y squared now we have dy over dx okay so that's what's gonna happen this is coming from the chain rule so we, we take the derivative with respect to y first and multiply by dy by dx always if it is not a function of x you always need to multiply by a term like that okay so that's you always get a term like that depending on the independent variable good and the other side is a constant so it's zero good so that's what we have now we can uh, so here here we use the uh, chain rule so we use the chain rule good now we can uh, simplify uh, this term okay actually take the derivative of that with respect to y is 2y so let's write that um, so i can write it here uh, so we're gonna get 2x plus derivative of y square with respect to y is 2y here we have i can we can write the prime notation just to make it easy so y prime equals here when you write prime please remember that it's dy over dx okay or whatever the independent variable uh, okay now uh, what else we can do uh, we can divide by 2 uh, both sides so then uh, you simply get x plus y y prime equals 0 so you can solve for y prime and then you get the solution we need okay so uh, so we have x that doesn't look like x so we have x uh, plus y y prime and then what we do we move x to the other side and divide by y so you're going to get dy over dx that means y prime which is equal to negative you move x to the other side divide by y okay so that is the solution so that is the uh, what we call the slope of the tangent line or the derivative of the function and you can see that in the solution you also have y so that's the difference so this is different from what you did so far so in the solution you may see y in there okay now if you know the point just plug in the point and then you can uh, uh, find the uh, slope of the tangent line actually we can do that part let's add that part to the problem so and then we assume that here uh, y not equal to zero because you are dividing uh, so if y is zero what you need to do you need to look at the look at the limit so what you do in that case you can consider the limit from the left and right uh, to y and see what's going to happen okay 
uh, so let's add this extra part to this problem uh, so let's say you know, find the slope of the tangent line find the slope find the slope of the uh, tangent line okay let's say just tangent okay find the slope of the tangent uh, to the curve to the curve exact same one okay x squared plus y squared equal 4 at the point at the point so if you have if you ask this kind of question at the point let's pick any point in the curve so for example a negative one is square root three is in the point uh, in this curve but if you plug in that point you're gonna satisfy the equation okay uh, at the point so let's try to do that so if you get a problem like that so what they're asking is the slope of the tangent line slope of the tangent line is the derivative okay slope is the derivative we already have that there so you so but if you get a problem like that you need to do that part first since we have that what you need to do is just evaluate okay so that means the slope so slope of the tangent slope of the tangent is simply you evaluate the derivative that means we use the notation we write a bar and then plug in the point that means evaluate at the point that's what it means okay so we evaluate the slope at the point but we only know the slope so it is x over y you can evaluate at this point negative one uh, negative one square root three so that means you simply plug in the x value so that's the x value that's the y value so let's plug in that so that means the negative x is negative one y is square root three if you plug if you simplify you get one over square root three i mean you can rationalize you really don't have to do that uh, so you can leave one over square root three okay good uh, so that's a slope now we know the slope we know the point so we can find the equation of the tangent line using the point uh, slope point form okay so the equation of the tangent line uh, the equations so these are the steps so we did that that's the next one so the equation equation of the tangent equation of the tangent is y minus the uh, y naught equal y minus y naught equal slope time x minus x naught this is what we call the slope point form so let's plug in y minus y naught which is square root 3 equal slope is 1 over square root 3 and then x minus minus 1 so that means x plus 1 okay so you can simplify this um, just a little bit uh, so you can move square root to the other side this is totally fine but we can also simplify this uh, so if you simplify what's going to happen y equal you have a 1 over square root 3x and then uh, here we have a 1 over square root 3 and then we have plus uh, square root 3 so if you take the common denominator what's going to happen is you get 4 over square root 3 see whether you can simplify that so that is the equation of the tangent line so if you look at the geometry part what's going to happen here so let's just try to draw this so this is a circle we are talking about um, so the circle is uh, with radius 2 so that's the circle we have here so the uh, so and then the uh, the values are negative 2 2 uh, 2 negative 2 so the point we are talking about is negative 1 square root 3 that means it's exactly half in between so that's the point so that's where you have so it's a negative 1 and square root 3 so that is the tangent line you are talking about so let's draw the tangent line so if you draw the tangent line you see that's the tangent line you are talking about so what this says that the equation of this tangent line is simply y equal 1 over square root 3x plus 4 over square root 3 okay so um so it's very clear and then you can see that how we use the uh, implicit differentiation uh to find a finding find equation of tangent line um uh, using the what we call the implicit differentiation okay good uh, so that's about that uh, so let's try to do a few more examples just to see just to consider different cases uh, so how about this one uh, so the next one uh, find find y prime if 
uh, we have x3 plus y3 plus xy equals 0. So differentiating uh, with respect to x, so we're going to differentiate uh, with respect to x. It doesn't matter x or you can even do y, uh, but you need xy step if you do that. So we're going to differentiate with respect to x. Uh, so if you do that, what's going to happen? Um, so, th so this is the idea. Whenever you take the derivative uh, of a function other than x, remember to multiply by y prime. So that's how you remember that. So we have uh, from the first term uh, 3x squared and then from the second term you can see that it is a, a, a y term. So what we can do, um, we can take the derivative with respect to y. So we have this chain rule. So according to chain rule we take the derivative with respect to y. So that means it is 3y squared and then we multiply by y prime. So that's what you want to remember. You always multiply by uh, the y prime uh, when you have a y function. Okay. Now for the next one, you can see it's xy, which is a product. So you have to use a product rule. So when you use a product rule, it is, uh, you remember the product rule. It is uh, uv prime, vu prime, okay, with a plus sign. And then, so that means uh, vu prime, that means x. And then take the derivative of y, which is 1, and then y prime, okay, plus, and then y, derivative of x is 1. On the other side is 0. So that's what happened. Now the next step is you're going to collect the y prime terms to one side and the terms without y prime to the other side. So let's do that. So that means you can have on this side uh, y prime times, you can see 3y squared from this term. And then you also have y prime term there. So that means it is plus x. So those are the only terms with the y prime. Then move the other terms to the other side, that means it's negative. We have 3x squared minus y. So we're going to move the terms without uh, y prime to the other side. Now what we need to do is simply uh, you're going to divide the two. So that means you're going to get y prime equal. We write the negative sign in front normally. So it's 3x squared plus y divided by 3y squared plus x. So that is the uh, derivative of this function. Okay, so let's go to another one. Uh, how about uh, this one? So let's say uh, find uh, dy by dx if tan xy equal 1. Okay, let's say equal x. So let's put something just let's equal x. Okay, uh, so what happened? same argument uh, we're going to differentiate uh, with respect to x with respect to x so if you do that uh, again the chain rule so we're going to take the derivative of this one so what do you do you just uh, it's a tan so that means it's going to be ck squared xy no changes and then multiply by the derivative of the inside function that step comes and then on the other side is one now, uh, so we leave it. So you can see that it's never changed inside. And then for this, we had to use the uh, chain rule. We, we already did that before. So that means takes the derivative of the, uh, so we write x. And then y, derivative of that is y prime plus uh, y, derivative of x is 1. So that's what you get, uh, and 1. Uh, now what we can do is, um, as before, uh, leave the uh, terms with y prime on one side. So I'm going to do it here. Okay, so uh, leave the terms with y prime on one side. So that means we have y prime x secant squared xy on this side. And then I'm going to move uh, the term without y, y prime to the other side. So that means y secant squared xy. Now what we can do, we can divide. So that means y prime equal 1 minus y secant squared xy divided by um, x secant squared xy. So that is the answer for this problem. 
So let's do a complete problem now. So let's say find the equation of the tangent line, find the equation of the uh, tangent line of the tangent to the curve uh, so let's say uh, x3 plus uh, let's say uh, to the curve given by you can say to the curve this okay to the to the curve given by it's not a curve given by uh, x3 minus 2xy squared plus sine y equal uh, 8 okay, sine y equal 8 at the point at the point uh, let's say 2 0 you can see that this point is in the curve because if you plug in 2 to the x and 0 to the y it satisfies that means this 2, two 0 is is one of the point in the curve so the argument is exactly the same we just take the implicit differences to find the slope and then plug in the value and find the equation so let's do that as a complete problem uh, so the answer uh, taking derivative with respect to x okay, taking uh, derivative uh, with respect to x uh, in the first term you get 3x squared minus so you had to use the um, product rule so we had 2x take the rate of y that means so you're gonna get 2y y prime plus now you write y squared take the rate of the first one so that means you're gonna get uh, y squared negative 2 okay from the um, second term and then we have sine is a sine y so that means it's going to be cosine y y prime whenever you have a y whenever you take a derivative of a y term multiply by y prime that's the only thing you need to remember okay that's it whenever you take a derivative of a y term multiply by the derivative of that okay anything other than x multiply by derivative of that term and then equal on the other side zero so they get now the same argument collect the terms with y prime so you can see uh, y prime in two terms i'm going to collect them so we have uh, y prime times uh, let's write the positive terms first so we have cosine y that's a positive term minus we have four uh, x y okay uh, from those two terms with a prime and then i'm going to move the uh, other terms to the other side so if you do that you're going to get 2y squared and then minus 3x squared so that's what you get and again uh, we can divide so y prime is simply 2y uh, squared minus 3x squared divided by cosine y minus 4xy so that's what you get so that's a slope okay that's a slope uh, it's a derivative or this is the slope at any point so what you need to do is we need to plug in the x y value to find the slope at that point so you can see the slope at uh, the point two zero is simply y prime evaluated at two zero that's a notation for that uh, so wherever you see x plug in two wherever you see y plug in zero that's what's going to happen so let's do that so that means you're going to be 0 with y is 0 and 3x is 2 squared over cosine 0 minus it's y 0 so this whole thing is 0 so you don't want to substitute for rest uh, it's simply uh, 0 good now let's simplify this uh, we know that uh, the cosine 0 is 1 so you simply get negative 12 as the slope okay now we can write the equation of the tangent line uh, so to do that uh, what we can do is okay, we can do that here so the equation of the tangent line is so let's see equation of the tangent so uh, it is simply a uh, y minus y naught the slope x minus x naught so it is y minus 0 that's the y value slope is negative 12 x minus uh, 2 that's x value so it is y equal negative 12x 
plus 24. So that is the equation of the tangent line at, uh, to the curve at the point 2, 0. Okay, that's a complete problem. Okay, so let's do another interesting problem. Uh, how about one with the natural log? Uh, let's do this one. Uh, find y prime if y equal natural log x squared plus y squared. Okay. Um, so the same thing, y is in and out. Uh, so um, you can use the uh, implicit differentiation for this one. Okay, so taking derivatives, taking a derivative uh, with respect to x. So we have this chain rule. Uh, so it is y. When you have y is a 1 times y prime. So we just simply y prime. So it is simply uh, y prime by the chain rule. Uh, so this is log. Uh, so that means the function goes down and multiply by the derivative of the uh, function inside function. In this case, the inside function is uh, x squared plus y squared. Good. So let's do let's finish it. So it is one over x squared plus y squared. Now this one x squared means two x. This uh, y squared that means two y y prime. Okay, always. You get the y prime if you know the x term. Multiply by the derivative of the inside function. Uh, and then uh, the way we uh, did before, uh, so no changes. Um, so you can multiply through and bring all the y terms to uh, y prime terms to one side. So that means we can write this one as y prime. And we can see there's a y prime term on the other side. You can bring it here. So you're going to get 2y over x squared y squared y prime and then we have 2x divided by x squared y squared so ticket okay so now uh, isolate the y prime term so it's i uh, y prime so this is okay let's take the comma so what do you get 1 minus 2y x squared y squared on the other side we have 2x x squared y squared and then we can take the common denominator once you take the common denominator you're gonna get x squared y squared minus 2y over x squared y squared on the other side we have 2x x squared y squared and then what we can do is we can simply divide uh, so you can see uh, this is a common term, so you can cancel that. If you multiply the two sides by x squared plus, that's going to get cancelled. So that means finally, you're going to get the derivative as uh, 2x divided by x squared y squared minus 2y. So that is the uh, derivative of this function. Okay, it's not that difficult. Uh, so um, Let's have a small note and see what's normally going on in a general situation, like a not general situation, but like a obvious situation uh, with a different discussion. So let's have a small note. So I'm going to say, uh, so this one, this is just for anyone who think like, you know, in a different way. So let's say find uh, the, the derivative dy by dx if, like obvious one, x plus y equal 3. We know that this is just a line, x plus y equal 3 is a line. So that means uh, we can write this one as y equal uh, negative x plus 3. Uh, so that means the slope is that. So that means what we get, this says that dy by dx, the slope is negative 1. So let's see how we get that using the, um, the implicit differentiation. Let's say we can use the implicit differentiation okay, by mistake. Uh, you don't need that okay you can so differentiate uh, with respect to x so if you differentiate with respect to x, you get one plus it's a y y means uh, what do you do it's, it's, it's not an x term it's a y term so if you write the complete argument what normally going to happen is you take the derivative with respect to y and then divide by dx that's what normally we write on zero on the other side so this means that uh, 1 plus derivative 
of y with respect to y is 1. So you get 1 dy by dx equals 0. And you can see clearly when you solve for dy by dx, you get negative 1. So that's exactly uh, the same thing. So that means even in this case, it, it, it work. It should work. Okay. But I'm telling, so this is like a, uh, you don't need that. But if you did that by mistake, you still get the same answer. Okay. So those two are the same. Good. So that's about that. Uh, so what we're going to do next is let's try to do a problem. Let's try to find the uh, higher derivative. Okay. Let's just do one example. Uh, it's not higher derivative. So how about higher derivatives? Higher derivatives. So we just do the same thing. Uh, take the derivative again. So uh, uh, so what we do uh, use uh, the uh, chain rule. Okay, use the chain rule and possibly uh, product rule or quotient rules. And mostly the quotient rule because you're going to get once you take the derivative, you get the quotient. So and the quotient rule. Okay, quotient rule. Um, so we remember the co quotient rule. So what's the quotient rule? Um, when you take the derivative of u over v, it is v comes first. v u prime minus, there's a minus sign, u v prime over v squared. So that's the one. So we can use that. Okay. So let's try to, uh, so we use the chain rule and the quotient rule in these cases. So let's try to uh, do this problem. Mm. So let's say the problem is find a y double prime if, if let's say x squared plus y squared square root equals something, let's say five, something like that. Um, so if you get a problem like that, you can definitely use the um, uh, chain rule, like just treating like that, um, because you uh, because a uh, square root function, and then we know what's the derivative square root function times the derivative of uh, the inside function. So we can do that. Also, uh, another way to do this problem is you can square both sides, but be careful when you square. What's going to happen? It may introduce additional. Uh, solutions so you have to be very careful uh, when you square something because it's not always the case okay for example uh, if you have x equal 2 if you square it x squared equal 4 but if you look at the solutions of x squared equal 4 now you have x equal plus or minus 2 so minus 2 never was a solution so that means if you say x equal plus or minus 2 now that's wrong because that's not a solution so you have to be careful when you square okay good um so what we can do is so let's let's again let's try just to make the uh, calculation easier but be careful because it can introduce new solutions okay so uh so let's say first squaring so there's a first step first squaring we have x squared plus y squared equal 25. Now what we do, we can use the implicit differentiation. Okay. Uh, by chain rule, for the implicit differentiation, uh, we have uh, 2x plus y squared that means to y y prime equal 25 on the other side that means zero uh, now again uh, 2 2 get cancelled so you can solve for a y prime so y prime is negative x over y so that's what you get as a first derivative now what are you can do to find the second derivative you take the derivative again okay so the using the quotient rule so you can see using the quotient rule using the quotient rule uh, we have y double prime which is d by dx uh, y prime so that means you can take d by dx 
are the negative x over y okay so just use the uh, regular quotient rule whenever you take the derivative of anything other than x multiplied by the derivative of that function okay so that's the argument uh, so that means this is that y double prime equal so we can write here so we can use the uh, quotient rule uh, which is v u prime u v prime over v squared so if you plug into that v uh, so you can uh, pull the negative sign out or you can just go with negative x as one term okay so you can go with negative x as one term or just pull the negative sign out so it's up to you so if you go like that then it is v v means um, y and then take the derivative of negative x minus negative x the derivative of y so derivative of y means y prime or you can write one y prime okay, if you want like that just y prime and then y squared so take the derivatives now negative x derivative means negative one so it's y negative one negative negative positive so it is x y prime so what you can do is you can substitute for y prime actually so you're going to get that y squared okay so let's i'm going to write the rest here so this is equal uh so what we have is negative y uh, plus x y prime we can substitute for y prime now because we know y prime equals uh, negative x over y according to this uh, and then over y squared so let's what we need to do is now is just is simplify this so how to simplify you can multiply the top and bottom by y so if you multiply top and bottom by y you're going to get negative y squared minus x squared over y3 and if you pull the negative sign out this is simply x squared plus y squared over y cube and you see that you cannot simplify this word so that's the final answer so that is the second derivative of this function okay so you basically uh, use the quotient rule for these kind of problems because mostly what happens when you take the derivative uh, the first derivative you get a quotient most of the time so you have to use the quotient rule in that case so when you use the quotient rule be careful when you take a derivative anything other than x you have to multiply by the derivative of that function so that's exactly what happened here okay because you try to take the derivative of y term so you multiply by that so it, this is simply one times y prime but we normally don't write y so one times y prime good so that's uh that's about uh, the implicit differentiation okay so that topic is over um uh, so next uh, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, go into hyperbolic trigonometric functions hyperbolic uh, trigonometric functions uh, because there are a lot of applications from that in calculus and other topics uh, like the differential equation engineering so let's talk about that okay that's a new topic uh, so hyperbolic uh, trig functions hyperbolic uh, trigonometric functions so let's write the definition of them uh, if you are not familiar with that so we define the hyperbolic sign so it is like shin that's how we call it so you put an extra h there to mean the hyperbolic okay so this is hyperbolic sign so we write like that so that is that is you add the extra h to mean that so it's simply defined using the exponential functions so hyperbolic sign is ex minus e minus x over 2 that's the hyperbolic sign and the hyperbolic cosine so hyperbolic cosine we say cos so that is with the plus sign ex plus e minus x over uh, two and then we have hyperbolic tan so we call it tan tan h it is simply the division of hyperbolic sine over hyperbolic cosine as before 
but once you do that what will happen 2 2 get cancelled you simply end up getting e x minus e minus x over e x plus e minus x so you can write this in several different ways for example you can multiply the top and bottom by uh, e x so then you get e to the uh, so you can write this one as e to the uh, 2x minus 1 over e to the 2x plus 1 so there are a lot of different ways to write it so this is just one way okay because that will be useful uh, when you take the derivative uh, because you only have like a non-constant term two only only two non-constant because that's one is negative one plus one those are like constants so take the derivative is zero so it's easier than the other one okay so that's about that so let's look at uh, the graph of uh, what the graph looks like so I'm just simply uh, graph them. So the first one, um, you can think of exponential function. So the um, that's the so that means the graph of sin looks like exponential on this side. It goes through zero and exponential on that side. So that's it. How it looks like. Those are exponential functions because you can you can subtract the two functions e x and e minus x. Okay. Uh, good. Uh, and then if you look at the cos function so it's gonna be uh, it's interesting actually uh, what I'm gonna do let's draw it like that uh, it's gonna go through uh, 1 because it's a uh, ex plus e minus 6 so that's means it's gonna go like this exponential function and then go to 1 and then again grow like that and you can see those are passed through 1 so you simply add uh, the two exponential functions here. So here what you did was you subtract the two exponential functions. Uh, like that you subtract and here you add them. So you have one like that. And then you have the other one like this. This will go to half, so like that. You add them, and then we have uh, the other one, uh, the uh, tan. So that's also very interesting. Uh, it's going to stay between two asymptotes, one and negative one. Uh, so the graph is going to look like this. It's just going to go through this and go through zero and go like that. So this is uh, one and negative one. So that's the graph of tan. So this is uh, y equal sin x, uh, sin x. This is y equal uh, cos x. So uh, y equal cos x. This is y equal uh, tan x. Good. Those are all hyperbolic trigonometric functions. Um, and then uh, you can see that some other things. This is a uh, odd function. And then you can see that this is a even function. And this is also an odd function. Okay. So odd, even, odd. I mean, that's what we expect. So you can see there are some features. Uh, that belongs to the trigonometric function. That's one of the reasons why we call these uh, hyperbolic trig functions, okay, trigonometric functions. Um, and then, uh, so let's try to uh, do one thing. Uh, if you take the derivative of the first one, so let's just do one to show you what's going on here. So uh, hyperbolic sine, that means the derivative of e x minus e minus x over two, and then you can see once you take the derivative uh, one half you can write outside uh, if you data the data the first one ex that means ex again and then if you take the data of the second one it is e to the uh, so we have minus e minus x times minus one because if you take the derivative of the top is minus one now you can see negative, negative positive so this is simply one half uh, ex plus e minus six what is this it simply become cos Okay, so if you take the derivative of um, hyperbolic sine, you get hyperbolic cosine. Okay, and then this is the rest of the uh, the table.
so we can add all c so these are the, all the identities so we have d by dx a shin x which is equal to cos of x and if we do d by dx cos x we expect a negative sign but it's not so it is positive here so this is different from uh, the um, other trig identities okay it's positive both positive and then we have uh, tan so d by dx uh, tan x okay I'm write this a little closer so d by dx uh, tan x uh, which is following the same tradition it is sec x so we have a h with the h sign and then we have d by dx uh, cot x so this is again very similar to the standard derivatives so we have uh, hyperbolic cosine x squared and then we have uh, d by dx uh, hyperbolic cos hyperbolic secant okay this is different there's a negative sign for this okay in the regular one there's no negative sign but the rest is the same pattern so uh, hyperbolic secant hyperbolic tan and the same thing uh, so d by dx hyperbolic cos secant x this is also follow the standard pattern so cosecant x cotangent hyperbolic cotangent x so only thing are different is uh, this and that okay because they have this one doesn't have a negative sign this one have a negative sign so that's the only uh, differences I exaggerate that okay so those are the uh, identities for hyperbolic um, trig functions Good. Next, what we're going to do, are we going to write the um, inverse derivative of inverse hyperbolic function as well? Okay. Good. And then we have uh, inverse uh, hyperbolic trig functions. Okay. So inverse hyperbolic trigonometric functions. Hyperbolic. hyperbolic uh, trig functions trigonometry functions good uh, so let's try the list uh, again we have identities for all six so I'll start with the uh, first one so it is d by dx a hyperbolic uh, sine inverse x so which is 1 over 1 plus x squared so you can see it is it is different from the regular one there's a plus sign here and then the d by dx cos a hyperbolic sine hyperbolic cosine inverse so cos inverse x so what's going to happen is 1 over x squared minus 1 square root so you can see it's a different uh, direction okay so normally in the in the regular we have one minus x squared but this is different so this is only valid for x positive x greater than one and then we have a d by dx uh, tan inverse x you can see it is also different it is one minus x squared one minus x squared and this is valid only when x absolutely x less than one and then we have d by dx cot inverse x so which is uh, 1 minus x squared this is the same as a as a function is the same but uh, this is only valid for absolute value x greater than 1 that's a less than 1 it's greater than 1 and then uh, we have d by dx uh, cos secant inverse x so which is different is the minus 
is completely different from others. It has x, and then one minus x squared is square. You can see it's completely different, and this is only valid for x in between zero and one. This formula, and then we also have the last one d by dx, uh, cos secant inverse x, and this is again negative one over absolute value of x. So you can see they are different. And then this side you have 1 plus x squared square root. Okay. And then this is only valid, uh, it doesn't valid for 0, so x not equal to 0. Okay, good. Uh, so those are the uh, inverse uh, derivatives of inverse hyperbolic trig functions. Okay. So, yeah, so this list. Good. So let's do like uh, two or three examples just to make sure that we know how to do it. Uh, so I'm not going to do many, but now this is like completely. So we have everything we need to know. Good. Uh, so let's do like just a couple of examples, uh, like maybe two. So let's try uh, this general case. So what if uh, u is a function of x? So let's say there's a function u, which is a function of x. So for example, uh, we can write a general result for this uh, inverse trigonometric uh, inverse hyperbolic functions. For example, what is the uh, derivative of uh, uh, hyperbolic sine inverse u? So that means we can simply use the chain rule. So according to the chain rule, what you're gonna, you're gonna replace x by u. So that means it can be one over uh, 1 plus u squared because we normally have 1 or 1 plus x squared square root times the derivative of the u function so that is the formula that we have so this is simply coming from the uh, chain rule okay from the chain rule uh, and then you can see the similar results uh, exist for others okay similarly for others similarly for others just to see this in action let's do like two examples so let's say uh, find the derivative of find the derivative of find the derivative of uh, let's do two problems so let's do this one uh, d by dx uh, cosh square root x and you can see there's only one function you don't need the parentheses for this one uh, so by the chain rule, uh, cos becomes shin, no negative sign, is positive, and then multiply by the derivative of the uh, inside function. So this means it is shin at square root x. This is one half x to the negative one half. If you rewrite with the positive index, so this is shin square root x over two square root so that's what happened and then uh, for this one this is d by d theta uh, we have tan inverse sine theta so let's see how this works uh, so we can use uh, the chain rule argument that we just discussed that mean tan so tan inverse uh, formula is 1 over 1 minus x squared so according to that it's going to be 1 over 1 minus x now replaced by sine theta so sine square theta times the derivative of the inside function so that means sine theta derivative so if you plug in that so it's going to be 1 over okay 1 minus sine square theta means cosine square theta according to Pythagorean identity derivative of sine means cosine now what's going to happen you can see one of the cosine get cancelled so you get 1 over cosine theta 1 over cosine theta means secant theta so that may simplify very well okay so that's how we use the uh, hyperbolic trig function and the inverse hyperbolic trigonometric functions so it's very simple so let's do uh, two advanced problems uh, before we finish the section um, so let's do a d by dx x uh, tan inverse x plus ln 1 minus 
x square square root so um so what we can do we can do term by term here uh, so before we take the in uh, derivative uh, what we can do is we can rewrite this so we can write this one as x turn inverse x plus you can see this is a one half power so you can take it out and then we can write this one ln 1 minus x square because it's going to make it easy to uh, take the derivative now once we take the derivative uh, you have to use the uh, product rule here for the first one so take the derivative of the first term uh, rewrite the second one and then uh, take the derivative of the uh, second one uh, and rewrite the first one so we write the first one take the derivative of the second one uh, so you can see that uh, it is 1 over 1 minus x square so that's the uh, derivative of tan in 06 plus we have here uh, 1 half the function goes down the derivative goes to the top so there are some simplification now uh, you can see these 2 and 2 get cancelled and then uh, what we have is a uh, tan inverse x plus x over 1 minus x squared and here you have minus x over 1 minus x squared so that means these two terms get cancelled so the final answer is simply uh, turn inverse x okay so it simplifies very well uh, so that's the derivative of this so that means if you integrate tan inverse x this is what you get and then let's do the last one of uh, this section uh, how about this d by dx shin inverse tan x squared tan x squared so what we're going to do we're going to use uh, we're going to apply the chain rule repeatedly so we can start with the first one uh, sine inverse x we know that the sine inverse x has the derivative no shin inverse x has a derivative 1 over 1 plus x squared square root and because of that the derivative of shin derivative of shin is um, 1 over 1 plus x squared square root so because of that your answer is going to be here by the chain rule 1 plus whatever inside you're going to put it here so that means tan um, x squared inside also have x squared and then square root times the derivative of the inside function the derivative of tan x squared that means tan so that means the secant squared function is x squared and also multiply by the derivative of the inside function uh, that means 2x so derivative of 2x is derivative of x squared is 2x so that's what you get now we can do uh, simple uh, we can simplify 1 plus tan squared theta uh, because of the uh, uh, trigonometric identity this is going to be secant squared because i square root this is simply going to be secant x squared that's what you get and we all also have secant squared x squared uh, and then uh, 2x so you can see one of the secant you can cancel so finally you end up getting 2x secant squared x squared good um so that is the uh, that is the uh, derivative of that function and also you can see that uh, so this simply equals to uh, so what other observation because you have secant squared so actually that's my squared so that was a mistake actually so it's, uh, so uh, so it is simply uh, C, because you could cancel one of them so you could see can x squared so that's what you can okay that's my squared there so that's the uh, finance good uh, so let's uh, look at the uh, one of the identity that's uh, useful for uh, solving uh, inverse hyperbolic functions next things so uh, uh, we can see uh, another uh, identity another identity for uh, we can see uh, inverse hyperbolic functions okay inverse hyperbolic functions hyperbolic trig functions 
so we have these identities that you can prove uh, using quadratic formula for example you can show that uh, shin inverse x no derivatives is simply equals to natural log x plus x squared plus one square root this only valid or oh, this is actually valid for any x and then we have uh, cosh inverse x you can show that this equals to natural log x plus x squared minus 1 square root and you can see that here this is x has to be greater than equal 1 uh, and then we have uh, similarly for tan inverse x so this is going to be 1 half a natural log 1 plus x over 1 minus x okay so we have those uh, three identities actually this is uh, valid for uh, x absolutely x less than 1 <coughs> so these are some identities that are useful when you want to simplify certain functions okay good so uh, that's basically uh, the basic functions uh, the one last thing that we're going to do here is we're going to talk about the derivatives of parametric curves and polar coordinates. So let's talk about that now. Uh, so we have. So now let's talk about one of the interesting topic. Uh, so what we're going to do is uh, what if if you try to take the derivative of an integral. So we know that those two are in uh, inverse processes to each other. So that means we expect that if you do that, that means if you take the integral first and take the derivative, we expect that you get the function back because we the two processes cancel each other. Actually, that's exactly what we get. Uh, that's what we call uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus. So the fundamental uh, theorem of calculus. So we call FTC. So let's talk about uh, how it works. So I'm going to give this as a theorem. Uh, so let's try this as a theorem. So what it says that if uh, f the function f is continuous, continuous uh, on an interval a b, a b, uh, then so then the function defined by then the function then the function a g uh, defined by defined by uh, gx uh, which is the integral from a to x so a can be any number in that interval it need not to be exactly the lower bound just pick any number in the interval so a to so integrate from a constant to x uh, the function ft Okay, dt so and then this is uh, so what happened here is so a less than or equal x less than or equal b so you pick a x in between that in that interval so it can be a or b good so what it says um, if this is the case um, so if if f is continuous if f is continuous that's the only condition we need if it's continuous on the interval a b then the function g uh, defined by this integral is continuous is continuous so let's try the shortcut cds continuous on the same interval a b and differentiable so that means you can take the derivative and differentiable uh, differentiable differentiable December on the open interval a b not the close interval on the only on the open interval okay on a b and the derivative of g is simply f you replace t by x so that's what it says okay so that is if you write this uh, in another form so that is if you take the derivative of the integral a to x uh, ft dt which is simply equal to fx you replace t by x 
that is what the how we write the fundamental theorem of calculus so it's like interesting result this is very useful um, when you want to uh, take the derivative of an integral okay so only condition that you want to check is whether the function uh, is continuous on that interval then uh, you simply replace t by x and also make sure that the format it will be a to x okay if it is not a to x you have to re, uh, bring it back to that form so let's do a couple of examples uh, so let's start with the first one uh, so let's say uh, let's do uh, write a problem just one problem find the derivative of the following functions find the derivatives find the derivatives of uh, the functions find the derivative of the functions let's start with the first one uh, let's say gx uh, which is given by uh, 0 to x uh, 1 plus t squared square root uh, dt uh, so the worst thing to do is just take the integral first and then you uh, take the derivative of that we are not going to do that anymore okay we don't need to do that because actually you don't know how to integrate this one uh, you need to uh, wait uh, until you learn some calc 2 stuff to do this okay so but we can use the uh, fundamental theorem now so what do you know so let's say uh, so the answer so since since uh, the inside function I'm going to call it ft in this case it is 1 plus t squared uh, this is a nice continuous function on that interval okay because 1 plus t squared is positive so it's, it's continuous very well okay is continuous is continuous on uh, the interval from 0 to infinity actually so that means we can use the fundamental theorem of calculus okay so then uh, because of that then we know that the g prime x is simply um, in this case fx okay fx so that means uh, you replace t by x that means 1 plus x squared square root done okay so very simple uh, this is simply coming from the uh, fundamental theorem it says that it is just the fx function inside function okay you replace uh, t by x okay that's the first problem so let's do another one uh, how about this one so let's say you have hx uh, which is let's say x to 1 3t squared sine uh, let's say 4t uh, dt something like that okay so what do you know about this inside function that's the function you want to pay attention so there are two things here one is is this in the right format so you can see that it is not a constant to x it is x to the x to 1 so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, switch that we're gonna change the order that means what we happen you know that when you flip it the negative sign comes out so you can write negative 1 to x so you're gonna do that that's the first thing and then we have 3t squared sine 40 uh, dt now we want to check whether this function is continuous and you know that these two uh, one is the first part is a polynomial the second one is a sine function both are nice continuous functions so the product is also continuous so yes so this function is continuous that means we can use the fundamental theorem okay so it's continuous on the whole interval negative infinity infinity so that's very good function okay so then uh, according to a uh, fundamental theorem uh, what's going to happen is you can write h prime x which is the negative i can pull the negative one out the d by dx uh, we can write 1 to x 3t squared sine uh, 4t dt and then we we know that that's in the right format now so simply replace t by x so that means the answer is negative 3x squared sine 4x okay uh, that's it uh, so what's the worst thing to do worst thing to do is integrate first okay integrate and then take the derivative but this is very quick you don't want to do that you just plug in uh, replace t by x okay now let's try to do a like a slightly different problem so number c how about this one uh, let's say you have function kx which is 1 to x squared 
uh, let's say cosine t dt or something like that okay now what you notice you notice that this is not x anymore this is x squared uh, and then you know that this is a co cosine function so this is continuous everywhere so that's that's good at least but the problem is this is not x anymore it's x squared so if you see something other than x what are you going to do uh, you're going to use substitution okay so you're going to say uh, let u equal um, let's call uh, let u equal x squared Okay, so that's the starting point. Whatever the function you're gonna pick as u. Once you pick this one as u, you can rewrite this function using the new variable. Okay, so that's what we can do next. So after we do that, then you can say, okay, the kx function is now it is one because you pick x squared as u, so it's gonna be one to u cosine t dt. No change inside. You simply change. Now you can see this is exactly like x because x is just a variable. Okay, now we have u. So that means we can use a fundamental theorem of calculus for this function now. Okay, but since it is go through the function u, we have to use the chain rule. So what we can do by the chain rule, by the chain rule, you know the chain rule. So by the chain rule, what we can do, the derivative of this function is, what we can do, we can take the derivative with respect to u first and then du over dx. So this is coming from the chain rule. Now what we can do, we can replace them. So we can, what we can do is, this is uh, d over du, we write that. So replace the function but with the u new variable. So one to u, uh, and then, so we have uh, cosine uh, t dt, okay, uh, times, so I'm gonna put a bracket here just to distinguish them and then we have du or dx du or dx we know what's the derivative of u function with respect to x that is 2x okay so that is the du over dx uh, that is uh, du over dx good now for the first part we use a fundamental theorem of calculus so if you use a fundamental theorem here you can see uh, it is a 1 to u function you take the derivative with respect to u so they simply use a fundamental theorem of calculus so what you're gonna get is simply you get you replace t by u so this simply becomes cosine u now times what we have from the other side so that's the difference so it's, it's u but you can leave it here like that because you uh, you there's something uh, you introduce you replace back uh, u because since we know that u equal x squared so put that back in and I also change the order so I write 2x first to avoid confusion so it's cosine x squared so that's what happened so you put the whatever the function inside and multiply by the derivative of that so see what happened you replace that by that function and multiply by the derivative okay so that's how uh, it works and we can see that um, in this step we use the uh, fundamental theorem of calculus okay so we use the fundamental uh, theorem of calculus uh, to get the um, I'll do the first part good so that's how it works so let's do uh, one last problem uh, uh, to see uh, more things but otherwise just the same things there's nothing new anymore okay that's it there are only two types of problems so uh, so how about the next one uh, so in this one uh, let's say you have a gx function so which is um, so let's say uh, 1 minus 2x cubed uh, negative 4 uh, 1 over 1 plus e to the negative t dt something like that okay what do you know about the inside function so there are a few things here um, so the first thing is you to switch the order so we can do that so we can read this negative and then negative 4 to 1 minus 2 x cubed 1 over 1 plus e to the negative t dt that's the first thing we switch the order and then what do you know about this function this is the exponential function uh, and we know that this function uh, is um, the exponential part never gets zero that's mean this is continuous everywhere so continuous on negative infinity plus infinity so that means everything looks good so we can use the again the chain rule so the first step is let okay let u equal 1 minus 2x cube that's the first step uh, and then we can use the chain rule as before so uh, 
uh, what happened after you do that then you can write your gx function in this form so negative negative 4 to u uh, 1 over 1 plus e to the negative t dt and then you know that the negative is in the uh, domain so that means everything looks good so now we can say by uh, the chain rule by the chain rule and the fundamental theorem of calculus uh, we can write the g prime x which is equals to the negative of the d by du the integral from negative 4 to u 1 over 1 plus e to the negative t dt times du over dx first part from the fundamental theorem of calculus is going to be 1 over 1 plus e to the minus u replace t by u times the derivative of u function with respect to x and you can see that that is negative 6x squared <coughs> okay now the last thing uh, we're going to do is we can multiply through first negative negative become positive and then replace u by the original function so if you do that you're going to get 6x squared over 1 plus e you replace uh, u by your function so it's going to be 2x cube minus 1 so that is the final answer for this problem so this is how we use a fundamental theorem uh, to find the derivative of an integral function okay function given it has an integral okay that's good um, so that's about the fundamental theorem of calculus So that's the last topic. So derivatives of parametric functions. Okay, so derivatives of derivatives of uh, parametric functions. Derivatives of parametric functions. Um, so there are something called parametric curves uh, so you know like you know uh, we learn this in calc 2 so like for example this curve so let's say you have a curve like this something like that uh, so the interesting part is when you have parametric curve it can cross each other uh, because that doesn't happen in a uh, in a regular function because you know, when you have function they don't cross each other but when you have parametric curve, uh, they can cross each other. So that's one of the interesting ones. So that's the reason why they have a lot of applications. So let's say this is the starting value uh, when the parameter equals to A. This is the ending value when the parameter equals to B, something like that. Okay. So and then there's a direction because where is going to uh, move when the parameter increases. It's going to go like that, go like this. So that's the kind of idea. Okay. And it's going to end up at this. Okay. These are what we call parametric curves. And when you have parametric curve, what we normally happen is you're going to give the x and y coordinate as a function of a parameter. So you can write this curve as x is a function of t, t is a parameter, and y coordinate is also a function of t. And then you can say t is in between the two values uh, a and b, uh, just to get the portion of the parameter. So this is how you write a parametric um, curve. Okay, so this is what is the parameterization of the curve. Uh, so all the familiar curves like straight lines, circles, ellipse, hyperbola, all of them have a parametric version of that that you learn in Calc 2. So um, and then you can also see that you can solve because you can remove this t from these two equations. Once you do that, what's going to happen? You get y as a function of x. Okay, so this happened uh, removing the parameter. Okay, so uh, removing the parameter. Once you remove the parameter, removing t in this case, the parameter is t, uh, you're going to get a function like that. So that means y is a function of x. So that means you can talk about those slopes and things like that. So, um, so let's talk about that. So the slope uh, at a point. Okay. So slope at a point. 
Uh, so let's say what we're going to do, uh, we're going to differentiate this uh, function with respect to uh, t in this case, because t is a parameter. So differentiating with respect to t, differentiating with respect to t, uh, what's going to happen? Um, we're going to differentiate that. So we can write this one as dy over dt, but we know that the y is a function of x. So what we're going to do, we do dy over dx by the chain rule. And then we write dx over dt. Okay, so <coughs> we introduce x in there. Now what we can do is we can solve for uh, x. Okay, so if you solve for x, so what's going to happen? Uh, we can write this one as if you solve for x, we can write this one as dy over dx. That's the slope is simply dy over dt divided by dx over dt so we can divide the two so that's so if uh, a dx over dt and not equal to zero so this is what we're going to use as the formula to find the slope okay so take the derivative with respect to the t parameter of y divided by take the derivative with respect to t of x so dy over dt divided by dx over dt so that we can use as the formula now for higher derivatives okay, so for higher derivatives okay so for higher derivatives what we can do uh, we can write as the second derivative d squared y over dx squared uh, so what we do we take the derivative of uh, dy by dx okay so that means we can use a simple trick here so so what we really need is uh, so we're going to take the derivative of uh, so you can use the previous formula what we want to do is simply replace y by uh, dy by dx let's come and do so you simply replace y by dy by dx to get this formula so if we do that uh, then what's going to happen is this simply becomes d over dt of dy by dx divided by in the bottom it is dx by dt no change so that means we get this formula simply using this formula so you simply replace y by dy by dx okay so that is the formula we use to uh, find the uh, higher derivatives okay so we use this to find the second derivative okay use to find higher derivatives or in this case the second derivative okay so let's do like two examples to see how it works okay uh, so let's do uh, this as the first example so again so what we do is uh, we use the exact same formula so you simply replace uh, y by dy by dx okay that's the only thing we did we replace y by divided by dx in the first formula so that means you only need to remember one formula for both derivatives okay so let's see this in action so let's do this problem so let's say find the first and the second find the first and the second uh, derivative of find the first and second derivatives of uh, the curve of the curve defined by defined by the parametric equation defined by the parametric uh, equations x equal t squared y equal t cube minus 3t okay just two equations it doesn't really matter just put some parametric some equations there <coughs> so x is given as t squared y is given as t cube minus 3t so you can see that x is uh, non-negative okay so you see the graph only on the positive x side so you can predict that there. okay so let's use the formula now so according to the formula uh, we know that uh, dy 
by dx is simply equals to dy over dt divided by dx over dt that's what the formula says so dy by dt take the derivative of y with respect to t so you're going to get 3t squared minus 3 dx over dt that means 2t so that's the answer okay also you know you can write uh, you can divide by 2t top and uh, top so that means you can rewrite this one as 3 halves if you divide by 2t you're going to get t here minus um, the 1 over t okay so you can write like that sometimes this is useful especially when you find a second derivative because if you try to use the first one it's a quotient but now it's easy when you write it like that okay so you're going to see the benefits sometimes we simplify like that it's not a must but it can help you okay let's look at the second derivative so if you go to the second derivative d squared y over d squared <coughs> according to the formula what we're going to do it is d over dt of dy over dx divided by dx over dt so according to that it is the derivative d over dt of the previous solution uh, we have this in this form because this is much easier to take the derivative you don't need you can avoid the quotient rule divided by uh, 2t and now uh, we can take the derivative of the top so it is simply three halves you can take it out if you take the derivative of t means one minus okay one over t if you take the derivative of one over t one over t how to take it t you're going to bring it to the top so t to the negative one so that means it's going to be positive uh, one over t squared divided by uh, 2t uh, now what we can do is uh, uh, this 2 and 2 become 4 so 3 4 t and then you can multiply the top and bottom by t squared if you multiply the top and bottom by t squared you're going to get 3 uh, t squared plus 1 over 4 t cube uh, this is 14 or t equals 0 okay. it doesn't it's not valid for that okay that's it that's the second derivative okay using a parameter okay <coughs> um so this also tells you certain things for example it is concave up for positive t concave down for negative t okay and then also if you if you graph this one uh, the, you're gonna get a, get a curve like this so this is the parametric curve that you get for this um if you uh, use the parameterization if you plot certain points so you're gonna get something like this so you're gonna get like that like that go like that okay so that's what you get um, and you can see that at this point the slope is zero okay so it's very clear when you plug in t equal uh, plus one or t equal minus one the slope becomes zero that's exactly what happened at this point slope is zero so this is for t equal minus one and this point slope is zero that's for t equal one okay you can see that <coughs> And that's the point three okay uh, so it's gonna move uh, in like this gonna go like that and go like this okay so that's the uh, parametric curve uh, that you get for that so let's do just do one more one more example uh, how about this one uh, so let's say find uh, the slope find the slope of the Find the slope of the tangent line. Tangent line, or is it just tangent? We don't say line. Tangent is a line. Tangent to the cycloid, to the uh, cycloid. Okay, so there are certain special patterns. Uh, this is there's a one. This is what we call cycloid. So cycloid is always given by like this. Uh, X equal R theta minus sine theta y equal r 1 minus cosine theta and then at the point uh, theta equal pi over 3 okay at the point theta equal pi over 3 
Uh, and then you can see that in this case the parameter is theta. So the parameter is theta. Parameter is theta. So let's write the formula. So according to the formula, it is dy by dx. And now the parameter is theta. So we can write this one as dy over d theta divided by dx over d theta. Uh, so that means y, you need to take the, and r is a constant, okay, r is a constant, only theta is changing. <coughs> so if you take the derivative with respect to, uh, derivative of y with respect to theta, you're going to get r is a constant, 1, so it's 0, minus uh, cosine, so which is uh, minus sine theta. Same thing, r theta, so you get 1, minus cosine. And now you can see that RR get cancelled. Uh, so you get uh, sine theta divided by 1 minus cosine theta. So that's the slope. Okay. So that means at point, so at the point, at the point, uh, Theta. Okay, let's say um, <coughs> because it's not the whole point, so we can say when. Let's say just when um, because it's not the whole point. I can say at simply say at theta equal pi over 3. So just find the pi over 3 value. So you're going to get the slope d over dx uh, evaluated when theta equal pi over 3. So just find the pi over 3. So it is sine theta over. 1 minus cosine theta evaluated at theta equal pi over 3. So that means just plug in pi over. This is how you write the like mathematics. Okay, so you need to understand how to write it. It's a language. So it is sine uh, pi over 3, 1 minus cosine pi over 3, sine pi over 3, which is square root 3 over 2. Uh, 1 minus cosine pi over 3 means 1 half. Uh, so that means if you simplify, you simply get square root 3. <coughs> so that's the that's a slope. Okay, so that's a slope. And then you can, since you know the slope, and you can also plug in the value and find the x value and the y value. So then you can get the point, and then you can use the uh, slope point form uh, for this one. Okay, so what is the shape of the cardioid? Uh, so, uh, so what happened is, so if you graph this, so this you get like a, a curve like this. So this is what we call the, uh, not the cardioid, the cycloid. So you're gonna get uh, something like that. So like, it's like stretch circle. Okay. So that's what you uh, you get like something like that. Those are what we call the uh, path of the cycloid uh, and at this place you can see the tangent line is like 90 okay so it's gonna go like that <coughs> uh, good so we're gonna find the uh, so you can find tangent at any point like that so, okay that's that's about that uh, and then the last thing uh, we're gonna do is the derivative of what we call polar curves that's just the extension of what we are doing right now so let's do that as the last topic so derivative derivatives or the slopes in the other case derivatives or slopes of our polar curves polar coordinates okay polar curves so there's another coordinate system what we call polar coordinate this have many many applications so in a polar coordinate system what's going to happen uh, there's a line and then uh, uh, and then what we can do we're going to start measuring the angle from the line okay so we measure the angle from the line and then you give a di distance how far you want to go so that means you get the angle and then go the direction so that's what that's how it works uh, so the let's say the angle is theta so we use a regular uh, sign convention of uh, trigonometry so that means if you go clockwise is positive 
and if you go counterclockwise it's negative so that's what we use the same thing and then this is the angle so this is what we call the polar uh, so this this starting point is called the polar okay and then this this one this line is what we call the initial axis initial axis that's where I can start and then you only need to give two information you need to give what is the angle and then how far you go r distance so r even can be negative negative means you go backward okay uh, so r positive means this r negative means you go backward good so you will give the angle and the distance okay so that's it that's what we call polar coordinates so we normally write the polar coordinates as r and theta so r first and then theta but when you actually do it we do theta first okay so r theta is how we write it and then uh, all polar coordinates you can write as r as a function of theta that's how you uh, write it r as a function of theta so that means it's just a regular another another situation of the parametric curves here the um, r act as the parameter okay so that means we can exactly use the same thing that we were discussing just a minute ago okay so uh, so we can say a few things uh, behaves as okay behaves as uh, behaves as uh, a parametric curve behaves as a parametric curve okay behaves as a parametric curve uh, and then uh, what we normally do is uh, we can use uh, a trigger a triangle to find the x coordinate and the y coordinate so we can do that so for example if you drop a line perpendicular uh, so we're going to consider this as x and this as y so you can give formulas for that so you can see that x is simply r cosine theta and you can see that y is simply r sine theta okay that's what happened uh, so those uh, uh, the coordinate x and y coordinate now r is changing theta is changing. both changing okay r changes theta changes so you can see that uh, both uh, r and theta change okay not just one uh, because theta is a function of r is a function of theta okay so that means you can write this one as uh, x which is r is a function of theta so say f theta uh, cosine theta and then y you can write again as f theta sine theta that's what uh, you get and then you can use the same idea to find the slope of uh, slope for uh, polar coordinates so let's do that okay so slope of the tangent line uh, <coughs> Uh, so let's do that now let's say uh, slope of the tangent line so the slope of the tangent this is an early argument so dy over dx and now the parameter is theta so we write this one as dy over d theta divided by dx over d theta uh, so that means <coughs> we need to take the derivative of y with respect to theta so what we can do we can replace y by r sine theta that we know uh, and then divided by the same thing d over d theta r cosine theta now we use the product rule okay use the product rule if you use the product rule what happened take the derivative of the first one multiply by the second one plus take the derivative of the second one multiply the first one so r cosine theta same thing here take the derivative of the first one multiply by the other function and then we have r derivative of the cosine negative sine so is negative r sine theta so that's the formula you get okay and then we know r as a function so you plug in there and simplify so that means as a formula you're going to get dy over dx equal dr over d theta sine theta 
plus r which is given cosine theta divided by the r over d theta cosine theta minus r sine theta so let's try this as a formula um so that's a formula so r is given so r is given as a function and it will be clear like when we do two examples so now what we can do is uh, there are special case so what's going to happen at the tangent line okay tangent line tangent line uh, at the uh, pole at the pole pole means uh, the beginning r equal zero case okay you stay at the origin so that means just plug in r equals zero here if you plug in r equals zero what will happen you can see you can simplify this very well so dy over dx is simply going to be <coughs> if you plug in r equals zero so you get dr over d theta sine theta plus zero divided by dr over d theta cosine theta minus zero and then you can see uh, this simplifies and you get sine over cosine sine theta over cosine theta which is simply tan theta okay so if if uh, dr over d theta not equal to zero so that means we have this formula so what happened dy over dx equal simply tan theta uh, at the pole okay this only works for the pole the pole so at the uh, pole good so those are the uh, that's the only formula that we have so let's choose to two uh, maybe just one example uh, to see how it uh, works so this is the last example of this discussion uh, so let's do uh, find find the slope okay find the slope of the tangent line Find the slope of the tension uh, to the curve uh, to the cardioid there's a one core one uh, curve called cardioid because say like a heart cardioid uh, r equal one plus sine theta so cardioid is special format you see the one plus or minus sine theta has the shape of a cardioid or one plus or minus cosine theta has the shape of a cardioid so you you learn these things in calc two classes uh, when let's say theta equal pi over three it's a number that simplifies very well so we like pi over three here okay <coughs> uh, so how to do the problem we know that r equal uh, one plus sine theta so that's the equation and you can see the r is a function of theta now so the slope is uh, simply dy over dx equal dr over d theta sine theta plus r cosine theta divided by dr over d theta cosine theta minus r sine theta <coughs> so let's plug in there uh, so it's, since this is like lengthy i'm going to start in this line dr over d theta state the derivative uh with respect to theta of r function you can see that that means one plus sine theta so once we get the derivative is going to be cosine theta and we already have sine theta here plus r is one plus sine theta and we have cosine theta here whole thing divided by dr over d theta again cosine theta and we already have a cosine theta here minus r means one plus sine theta uh, this is sine theta <coughs> and then you can see uh, you can uh, in the first one you can take uh, cosine theta out as a factor so if you do that you get cosine theta you're gonna get one plus two sine theta divided by in the bottom one you can see you have cosine square theta 
<coughs> okay let's write that you're gonna get cosine square theta and you also get minus sine square theta and then minus sine minus sine theta so you have minus sine theta and using the double angle formula you can write this one as cosine theta 1 plus 2 sine theta we know that the cosine square theta minus sine square theta equal cosine 2 theta minus sine theta so this is simpler than the original one and you can see there are you cannot simplify this further so you have to leave it like that now what we can do uh, we can evaluate this at theta equal uh, pi over 3 so you can see when theta equals pi over 3 you have dy over dx the slope at theta equal pi over 3 equals to just plug in cosine pi over 3 1 plus 2 sine pi over 3 and then we have cosine 2 times pi over 3 minus sine pi over 3 if you plug in the values this is 1 half 1 plus 2 times square root 3 over 2 here we have <coughs> cosine 2 times pi over 3 which is negative 1 half okay so look at my trigonometry uh, uh, video in that I explain how to simply find a value of any trigonometry functions that's very very easy okay that's an easy way to do it using the uh, ASTC and the reference angle so you can simply see that it's negative one half because in the second quadrant our reference a second quadrant so it's negative with a cosine and the reference angle is pi over three which is one half so it's negative one half okay minus square root three over two so if you multiply the top and bottom by uh, two uh, you multiply the top and bottom by two and you can see that uh, you're going to get a factor 1 plus square root 3 that get cancelled so you simply end up getting negative 1 so the slope is a negative 1 okay so that's it the simply is very real actually so slope is simply negative 1 <coughs> uh, so if you need more steps we can do that so you can see what you get in the top is when you after you multiply by 2 you get 1 plus square root 3 in the top in the bottom you get negative 1 plus square root 3 okay you can see that get cancelled and you end up getting negative 1 okay that's what happened okay so i'm going to give you an uh, exercise try this problem so uh, so find find the slope find the slope of the uh, tangent line Find the slope of the tangent. Find the slope of tangent to the ellipse. To the ellipse. Uh, you know that the ellipse is given by uh, in this form uh, equation like that. Okay. So let's say two minus sine theta. So this is a ellipse. <laughs> this we discussed in calc two. Um, at theta equal pi over 6 okay so if you look at the complete video as a courtesy uh, see whether you can write, find the solution of this one and write it in the comment section okay so um good Now that you know how to find derivatives of pretty much all type of functions, uh, including power functions, trigonometry functions, inverse trigonometry functions, hyperbolic functions, exponential functions, and logarithmic functions, and you also know uh, the implicit differentiation. So I'm going to give you some practice problems uh, for you to try, and you can see the uh, solutions for those problems in the description. 
okay and but i will wait until at least one of you ask me to uh, post those solutions so if at least one of you ask me to post the solutions i'm going to put the solutions in the description okay so i will wait until uh, you're going to do that so these are the problems uh, so i'm going to call this practice problems so practice problems so let's see uh, so we're going to divide these into four problems because the four type of problems so the first one i will just ask find the derivative of the following function so find the derivative find the derivatives so i'm going to say a y equal 3 x to the fifth minus 6 over square root x plus uh, 4 sine 3x plus e to the minus 2x b y equal x to the fourth e to the negative 3x c y equal i'm gonna call all the functions y it doesn't really matter changing uh, so 1 minus x to the cube 2x plus 3 t uh, y equal x to the fourth plus 3 divided by 2x squared minus 1 e now y equal to e negative 3t plus natural log uh, 1 minus t and then f y equal x to the fourth minus 3x squared to the power the fifth part uh, and then g y equal cosine t to the sixth we don't need the bracket here it's clear h y equal 5 t to the 4 minus 8 t plus 5 square root and then here i uh, y equal e to the sine uh, theta squared and then j y equal e to the tan theta square root uh, and then k uh, y equal base 3 t squared minus 1 l uh, y equal tan sine x to the cube uh, and then m so let's do a little complicated one so how about sine cube cosine tan x squared and then n uh, y equal 1 minus sine theta 1 plus sine theta square root and then uh, we have uh, uh, we can skip all because that can be complicated so, so let's say p and we can have a y equal natural log uh, x3 minus x to the fourth root okay, something like that and then uh, q 
y equal let's say x to the cube uh, x to the fourth minus x the cube root uh, that's let me take a little more space so it's not clear so let's change the problem yeah so let's say x to the fourth minus x the cube root divided by x squared plus 5 and the r uh, y equal x square root x and then we have s y equal 1 plus x to the 1 minus x that's kind of interesting uh, then we can have t y equal sine inverse 3x minus 1 and then here u uh, y equal tan inverse or the arctan sin x and then v uh, y equal uh, hyperbolic secant uh, 3 theta 3 theta uh, plus 4 uh, w uh, let's say y equal hyperbolic cosine secant theta this simplifies very well you can see it simplifies very well uh, say x uh, y equal so this is also like really nice one uh, this simplifies uh, very well uh, x sinus x plus 1 minus x squared square root I'm going to start here because these two like simplifies very nicely um, and then we have y uh, so plus a similar one but using hyperbolic sine function so x sin inverse x over 3 minus 9 plus x squared square root okay that's question number one uh, and then in the other question uh, we're gonna go with the um, implicit differentiation problems parametric curves and polar coordinates okay so let's do that next so the next question I'm gonna call question number two uh, find y prime uh, y prime if we can say if uh, the first question is x3 minus 2x y squared equals sine y that's the first one and the second one 3x plus e to the xy equal y and question number three find y prime and y double prime if x equal t cube and y equal 2t squared minus 1 and number 4 let's say find uh, find the slope find the slope of the uh, find the slope of the tangent tangent to the hyperbola to the hyperbola r equal 3 divided by 2 minus 6 cosine theta you know that this is a hyperbola i use in the polar coordinate okay uh, at let's say theta equal pi over okay so try to do these questions and compare the answers uh, in the description and also I'm gonna wait until at least one of you ask me to pose the solutions so then it's gonna uh, be there okay so thank you so much uh, for watching the video